Let's be having you. Come on, United. Hello, everybody. What's going on? It's the Flying Pig here on Flying Pig United. We have another cheeky little stream for you lads and us as we're here for the game. Everton away at Manchester United here at Old Trafford. Kick off at 12.30. We better smash up these toffee melts, haven't we? Yes. We've got, obviously, to try and get back on track this season, to try and push for top four. It ain't going to happen. But if you're going to have a chance of doing that, you've got to dispatch of melty teams like this melting Everton side. So fucking come on, United. Let's get at these melts today. Smash them up a good one. Three, four, three, four goals. And let's put on a bloody show because this has been a gas season so far. And uh, yeah, we need to get back on track after a couple of dodgy, dodgy performances and results. Welcome into everybody in the stream today. Thank you for joining us and getting involved. Who is in here? Let's take a little wee look. We have got CHD. What's happening there? Danny McMillan. Chris Don. Yes, mate, how you doing? Madhouse, must play. Simon, Dr. Dassler, Mark Swede Barrett. Yes, bro, must play. Time and Tide, Kingslayer, Paul Ennis, 
Let's be having you, Sean Collins as well, Simon Warner, CHD, Charles, Scoojo, Kingslayer, UK Strange, Jamie Todd, Get Out, Chris Koo, Nick Pendragon, Fun Chainsaw, Joshua Cross, Ben Dorr, How's It Going, Sanjay, Daz, 76 Mad Matt, Must Play Exclusive, Blue Boy, and everybody else as well. Thank you very much for getting in here for today's show. Hope you're all good. Hope you're having a good day. Mark Harris, get in there, Mark. Andrew Cars, yes, guys. Welcome in to you all. Do us a favor at the start of this stream and smash the like button on it. Super, Give us a massive thumbs up. That'll help the stream out and all that jazz. Please do smash that like button at the start of this one. Share it around if you want as well. That'd be much appreciated. And subscribe. Get yourself involved. Subscribe to the channel. Have your safer out. We love to hear from you. Um, are you feeling better? Um, uh, Ulfric Stormcloak says, Piggy, you are a legend. Who wins in a boxing fight between Anthony Joshua or Harry Kane? Oh, you know what I mean, Harry. Um, honestly, I think Kane, with a chin like that, lad, he'll be undroppable, won't he, that guy? Come on, mate. It'd be like, you know, Anthony Joshua is a big, strong lad, but imagine if Anthony Joshua was trying to fight a horse. Do you know what I mean? Like, the horse has just got too much of a, of a chin. You know, that's what I feel like with Kane. It's just, he's got too much of a chin on him. Anyway, Chris Koo, thank you, thank you so much for your super chat here. Come on, let's go. Everybody get some big love in there for Chris Koo, who has just gifted me two pounds. Thank you so much there, Chris, too. He super says, you're up four hours chat. early, pig. Oh, tell me about it, mate. Oh, tell me about it, mate. This is horrible time. I hate the early fixture. I really do. Whenever it's 12.30, dread it, mate. I'm not used to this guff. Oh, no, no, no. This is horrible. This is absolutely horrible. But either way, you know, we're here. <laughs> Chris Koo, we are here early, mate, for me. Maria Steer, let's go. How are you doing, Maria? Henrik Kjellman, great to see you too. Blue Boy, Jonathan Gallagher, Tony Snooker fan. I agree, no excuses today. Got to be decent, hasn't it? Yep, JB Mackey, welcome in. Um, also, I've got, I missed this one, Fun Chainsaw. So did you take a pre-game dump? I mean, that's a very personal question you've just asked me there, Fun Chainsaw. Um, it, to be brutally honest, I tried and failed. <laughs> I tried and failed. So, a bit of a phantom poo, you know what I mean? Anyway, thank you, Fun Chainsaw, for your question. No worries. <laughs> uh, <laughs> might be a mid-game incident again, like last time. Who knows? 4 a.m. there is it, CHD. Wowzers, man. Fair play to you. Big respect getting in, getting in at that time. That's a, that's a proper fan right there for, uh, of the team, mate. Hopefully they are uh, putting a decent performance for you. I'm dehydrated, says Charles. How do you know that then, Charles? <laughs> mate, can we drink some water here, mate? Hello there, JR. What's happening, bro? Um, Hussein, what's the lineup? Okay, great shout there, Hussein. Let's have a little look, see what's going on. So this is the team lineup today. Oh, shit, hang on. We've got a uh, Gary Mavers has just gifted out a membership on the channel, guys. Everybody get some big love in there. Thank you for the new member, Gary. You've gifted out a new member and it's gone to Marty J. Welcome in, Marty. Everybody, can we get a big thank you to Gary Mavers in the chat? Thank you, Gary Mavers, for making Marty there a member of the channel, mate. Get in there, you beauty. Come on. Thank you very much. Um, the, the team, the team lineup today, right? Is this? It's this. Let me pop it up on the screen here. So we've got Onana in goals, Dallo, Varane, Evans, and Lindo, seemingly playing left back. Kobe Mainu, Casemiro, Scott McTominay, Bruno Fernandez. I can only imagine that this graphic is obviously wrong, and that McTominay will be that Bruno will be playing out on the wide side. Or I don't know. Rashford. Maybe Mick Tommy put up top, who knows? But that's that's the lineup right there. It's uh it's looking, you know, sus, but it should be enough to get the job done against this absolutely guff. Sean Dyche Everton side, Sean Dyche's Everton rocking up at Old Trafford today. Uh with a bit of gravel in their throats, you know. They've got their lozenges in their hands and they're ready for a tough day at the office. You know, I do think Man United are gonna batter Everton today. Everton are a pretty guff side. But these are the sorts of games that you can easily step up in. We've got to actually turn up, do the job. But we are a better side, I think, even now. Even though we're not very good than, than Everton. So we should be better in them. Chris Koo says, ropey looking lineup. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Mikato says, shit. <laughs> yeah. Mikato, right, guys, rate that team lineup out of 10. <sighs> I mean, if we're just rating the team lineup out of 10 compared to, like, good Manchester United team lineups of days gone by, then it's basically a one. <laughs> you know, if we're being totally honest, it's it, if we're just comparing it to, you know, like when, I don't know, Wayne Rooney's doing the punditry, where, like any team Wayne Rooney was in, for instance. It's really not a very strong look side. That's the only thing, so, yeah. 
Um, let's have a look at what people are saying here. Actually, I'll just move that. Three, four, says John Hazeldean. Chris Coote says three. Tony says two. Four, says Johnny. Yeah, over to John Anderson. Two, one to the toffee. Six out of ten. Simon, wow, that's generous. Vutinator, hey, Berber, what's going on, you dons? Crap team, but it's all we have. Let's go 4 0. Alejandro Starboy, Berber, go on, my son. Love that positive vibe right there from you, lad. Hope you're doing well as well. Great to see what's good. And the Vutinator, thank you, Vuti, says we've got 112 likes. That's decent. We've got 301 people watching before kickoff. Let's see if we can get 300 likes, everyone. Smash the like button if you're just joining. Thank you very much, Vutinator, for the tally up there, my son. Um, love to see you boys score a whack of goals. Ooh, yeah. Definitely get that, get that whack on. What? <laughs> but you know what I mean? Hopefully score a whack of goals. Absolutely. We want to see a lot of goals today, mate. 3-0 Everton. What was it in the last fixture? I think it was 3-0 to United, wasn't it? When we played them at Goodison a few months back. That would have been, yeah. That was 3-0 to United, wasn't it? So we did that in their own backyard. They're coming to our backyard. Prediction time. I'm going for 4-1. 4-1 to United, guys. That's my prediction. We probably will ship a goal, because let's face it, we've got fucking Tweedledee and Tweedledum playing on our back line. And, uh, you know, it's a little bit sus. But they do, they probably are going to concede goals as well. They're a bit of a melty side themselves. They've also got that kiddie from This Is England playing in goals as well. You know, I just feel like they can be battered here. So I'm, I'm saying 4-1, 4-1 to United today. Get your score predictions in. Johnny's going for 3-1. Yeah, I know, Simon. 3 0. Let's be having you. 4 1. Uh, yeah. Oh, West Ham beat them 4 1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 5 3 United. Menu with a double. Love that. Love that. Hey, Gangshi, what's going on, you absolute handsome bastard? What's happened, dude? What's your prediction in my sand? McCarter says 2 0. Scotty and Garnacho to score. 3 1. Simon Warner. 2 2. The Hofster. United couldn't beat Palace or Nottingham, and that's Palace with Hodgson before the sack. <laughs> True. It depends which United turn up. Look at that side against Fulham the other day. We were pretty rough, pretty ropey. I mean, we're... <sighs> yeah. Contrary to popular means, Sean Dyche was a firm Remain voter. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, Gungshi says 3-1. Get in there, Gungshi, you legend. Let's go 3-1. MCFR says 2 on Everton. Get out. Alfie says 3-0 United. Daz says 2-1 United. 4-0 full-time. 2-2. 1-0. 10-1. Boring 0-0. Nah, we're going to batter him. <laughs> Must play Everton have T-Rex arms in nets. 6-5 uh, says Madhouse. Ren says 2-0. Alex is going 1-0. Dimitri's going 2-0. King is going 1-0. All right, guys. Well, most of us feeling confident we can get the job done against this Everton side. If we have a look at Everton's side, Everton's side, you know, it's shite. Let's have a look at it. So they've got uh, Mikhailenko, Brave, 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 Wait, Tarkowski, Godfrey, Pickford in goals, obviously, McNeil, Garner, Onana, different Onana, different A Onana. It's the battle of the Onanas. Harrison, Decore, and um, and also a better up top there. So that is their lineup, guys. I reckon it's shite, but Man United, <laughs> you know, we also don't have a great lineup as far as United sides go. Tarkowski captain the side. Of course, Tarkowski's captain in the side for Sean Dyche, you know. Uh, he loves him. Tarkowski, take him wherever he goes. In fact, he takes him over and pops him in the shed at night. He loves Tarkowski, doesn't he? Fucking loves him. He's the captain there. So, yeah, they've got a decent side, but we should be battering them. Pickford should be on the bench. <laughs> Jordan Pickford, crackhead streets of rage, final pass. Worst videos ever. Yeah, I don't know about that. I think you might even be shiter than, than Everton. Or, or I, think, no, I, think, I, think, I think Everton might even be shiter than us, is what I'm saying. No, Ashley Young for Everton, 2-2. Two, two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true, that's true. It's okay, we have me and Collier on the bench. 2-0 <laughs> no to the bitter blue shite. Deitch ball will win out, don't you dare. Dirty as fuck, Tarkowski. I did watch the AJ fight, mate, yes. It sort of went kind of how I expected it to go, really. Maybe a bit quicker than that, but... Um, yeah, AJ's a boxer, mate. AJ's a boxer. I think Fury just... Didn't even really bother training much for the last last fight. And Garnu's an absolute beast, by the way. Love Garnu. What a legend. Literally going to fight like the two fucking hardest people in the in their respective sport. First couple of fights out. He's a madman. But yeah, obviously, AJ's an actual boxer. And that was always gonna happen, weren't it? Let's 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 hope we do that. Let's hope we do that to these Everton mugs tonight and absolutely knock them out here in the second round. That would be beautiful. 
Joshua won. He did indeed. Yeah, he did indeed. Hello there, Dave Watkins. Yes, let's smash up these toffee melts. Let's give him that overhand right, son. Do you know what I mean? Let's give him that overhand right. Knock him on the canvas. Yeah, that sets up AJ v Fury, doesn't it? Regardless, really, if Fury, uh, lo even if he loses to Usyk, I think at some point you've got to see that fight. Yeah, amazing money, UK streams. He definitely did the right thing getting into the boxing anyway. And Garnu, man. Beast. Love that guy. I was rooting, even though AJ's obviously represented England and that, I was just massively rooting for uh, for Nganu, but yeah, it wasn't to be. Okay, the game's about to kick off, guys. Come on then, United! Come on, United! Let's go. Bruno Fernandes is going to get us underway. Uh, let's hope for a banging result here, guys. Banging performance on top. Goals, goals, goals. Let's go. Ref's got his whistle to his mouth. We're underway here at Old Trafford. Time is up in the top right-hand corner. Please do sync up with me if you can there. Um, if not, we'll let you know exactly what's happening in the game. Right, guys, yes, lock yourselves in, smash the thumbs up, subscribe, super, strap yourselves in, chat. batten down the hatches. This one's going to be a barn burner. Hey there, Man United Fan for Life. Thank you very much for the super chat, guys. Get some love in there, please. Thank you, Man United Fan for Life. Chance for Everton early doors. Ball played over to the right. Manu wins it. Lindelof clears it away out. Bruno wins it back. It's a bit of a erratic start here. Dallow, surging forward, nice run. Dallow, had a great season so far. S same here, superstar. Oh, all good, thank you, Man United fan f for life. Thanks for asking, mate. How's you doing, dude? Not too bad, mate. Not too bad, not too bad. Thanks for asking. Daichi chewing worms. Oh, yeah, he's over there on the sidelines. Never mind, that's for Alex Ferguson Wrigley's chewing gum, mate. Oh, no, he's straight on the worms, bro. He's uh, tapping on the turf there on the side of Old Trafford, waiting for the worms to pop up. And he's picking them out, mate. <coughs> Yeah, indeed. Super, super yeah, he's jam. class, isn't he, Burb? Absolute class. Hello, Tommy Boyle, mate. Yes, I'm good, mate. Come on, get in there, Tommy Boyle. We need the dubs here. Oh, here he is. <laughs> Zamy Assi says, we are going top of the league, Don Piggy. What league is that? League of bottle bottlers? What league is that, though? The League of Extraordinary Bottle Men? I don't know. Zane Miassi, though. Thank you very much for your super chat, lad. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice one, just harmless potato. Yeah, I haven't updated that for several years. <laughs> uh, show some passion. Hey, Roy Keane, what's going on? Show some passion. Do your job. That's your job. That's your job. Do your job. Corner for Everton. Knocked in there. Then Johnny Evans heads it away. <sighs> Let's get this shite done. Absolutely. Oh, my God, Andre Onana smothers it very well there. Dodgy, dodgy stuff. Very dodgy stuff. The ball's into the box from the wide left for Everton. It's a it's a dodgy one. This player's attacking it. It's really dodgy, mate. Thankfully, Andre Onana does brilliantly and manages to clutch it between his legs. But it's, and it's a handball anyway. It's definitely a handball in there. If they had scored, it would have super, been ruled out. But chat. Andre Onana does brilliantly there. Very good, very good goalkeeping. <clears throat> spot on timer what about the timer lad we've got the timer on the go timer's on the go yeah sync up with us if you can oh man united fan for life thank you very much bro for wanting to be a member oh shit wait oh dodgy sloppy stuff there cassie gives away we win it back bruno fernandez now looks to counter attack dodgy start here from united we're looking to counter here. Mate, thank you, Man United Fan for Life. I don't know if one of the mods could post a link to the channel membership, or there should be a link in the description of this video, or if you click the little dollar sign down in the in the chat somewhere that you can hopefully get the link. But, mate, thank you for uh, wanting to be a member there, dude. Nice one. Top man. Hey, there it is, mate. Thank you, Don Berber, lad. That's what I'm talking about, sir. Um, yes, mate. Thank you very much. I'm going to pin that to the top there. There is uh, there is the member link if anybody wants it. Don Berber coming in there. Clutch, mate. You just literally had that in like two seconds. That is some pro stuff right there. <laughs> right. Let's pin that to the top. Right, okay. That's pinned to the top there, mate, if you need it. Thank you. Okay, Varane then. Back to Andre Nana. Slow start by us guys today. Very slow start. Casemiro then dropping into the back line here. Thank you, Mickey Lund. Good to have you here. 
Stuart says, Pig, do you think the Premier League has to change something to stop teams coming up and dropping down next season? What do you mean, like, get rid of relegation so it's like a closed format like America? Hell no! I hate that. I hate the closed franchise system. It's an absolute debacle. What I love about the English Football League is, in theory, you could set up a team tomorrow and start in, like, the bloody 14th division, like, playing in your local Sunday league team or whatever. As long as it's within the football pyramid at some point, you could, over the course of 50 years, build that club into a professional side. That's what's so awesome about the English football system and what's so terrible about the American sports franchise system is that it's just closed. It doesn't matter if you win it, finish first or last, you're still in it next year. That's bullshit. Anyway, um, and then, yeah, you're stuck with those teams. That's bullshit. I don't get that. Okay, hang on. We've given the ball away really badly. Casemiro, I think it was. We're having a stinker. Here come Everton. They switched up play to the right. They've got an early chance here. Ball to the back stick. Great, great goalkeeping by Andre Onana. Just comes out and completely smothers the uh, the cross. Done brilliantly there. He's having a good time of it at the moment, Andre Onana. Not too shabby, not too shabby Gary Finnegan. Still a bit, just a bit, a bit under the weather last few days, mate. I know I'm sick of saying so, to be honest, but I've been a... Uh, very, very under the weather, mate. <laughs> Let's go, says Berber. Was the Champions League group stages the highlight of the season so far? Do you want to Do you want to go and eat a bag of you-know-whats there, Roy? Definitely. It's all erratic, giving the ball away. So far, we have 76 possession. I mean, it's very erratic so far, mate. Very much so. Look, here again, we've given the ball away. Is that going to be another? It's another corner for Everton. This is a poor start by us, most definitely. Can't keep hold of it. It's a hot potato out there. We're playing hot potato football. So, yeah, at training, do you know what Ten Hag does? He gets himself a, you know, bunch of King Edward fucking whatever you want to say, bangs with a bunch of tin for, heats them up in a fire, and then that's what they play with. They don't play with a football, mate. They play with a hot potato covered in tin foil in training, it, it seems, because they can't keep hold of the pissing ball. They don't want to. Uh, corner in for Everton to the near stick. Bruno knocks it away. Oh, shit. No, really well cut out by Rafael Varane there. The ball. I'll tell you what, Everton look up for this, but that is a lovely ball. Into Rashford on the counter. Go match it. Back stick. Pass it, Rashi. You're shit, Rashford. Why wouldn't you pass it first time early doors to Ganacho? Oh, he's got three defenders in between him and the goal. And he's just trying to take it all around over them and get the space. Okay, fair enough. He's almost got half a yard. His shot's blocked. Mate, look at Garnacho in the back stick. You could loft a little ball over or play a little pass through. Fuck me, it's a tap-in. Rashford, you selfish man. I don't understand. Dude, what? in what reality is it more likely to score a goal from where he was with three defenders in front of him than just passing the ball square to Garnacho. He's, 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 that, what's, he, he celebrates like this, yeah? When he scores, he celebrates like this. Mate, does that mean I'm po pointing to where my brain should be? Because he doesn't seem to have that. Oh, Rafael Varane has just got a glancing header from the corner across goal there. Oh, it's Casemiro, actually. Um, Pickford makes the stop easy. It's right at him. Don't get that from Rashford there. Fair enough, if there's nobody on, go for it. But he's literally got the easiest pass. There's a, there's a definite pass on to Garnacho there. So annoying. Crazy that, man. Don't understand. Good morning there, Rakdos Madness. How you going? Pass to Garnacho, absolutely. Hey, uh, Inatama, thank you for the super chat, my friend. He says, do you think Everton will get relegated? Um, I don't, actually. No. I personally don't, actually, mate. Mate, thank you very much, by the way, for getting in with that raw one. Do you think they will, then? Spurs fan, great to be with you again. Thank you, Jeff Lee. Welcome in. Nah, definitely, I know, yeah. That, lacking, that, lacking that football IQ there. So definitely played the ball over to Garnacho. Okay, Diogo Dallo, Kobe Mainu. He's fouled. It's, it's a disgrace. Free kick to United. The foul by Tarkowski on Kobe Mainu there brings him down. Hey there, TCG Hub. How you doing, you legend? Reminds when Ronaldo and Greenwood went past to each other. Yeah, well, I think it's just Rashford doesn't pass to anyone, does he? Rashford. He doesn't like pass to anyone. No one went to the pass to balls a real talent. None of our forwards know when to pass it. Morning there, Christian Hill. Do you reckon? I mean, I don't know, Pro Lang. I mean, I don't know. What do you reckon? Keep or sell Marky Rashford? I still am going to give him a little bit of a chance, guys, you know. I mean, I know, I know we've seen basically a whole season of absolute dross from him. So inconsistent and rubbish, but... Just because he's, uh, I mean, it only counts for so much, but just because he is an academy product and a local lad and everything, let's hope that he can maybe 
can come back to the point where he was like an actual good player for us last season. But it is just it's very hit or miss from the guy. Very hit or miss. And the football IQ, you can't really change that. Oh, penalty! Yes, mate! Garnacho brought down! Referee points to the spot! It's that dirty bastard Tarkowski again who's done the deed! And Alejandro Garnacho down on the ground. We've got a pen, lads. Come on! Get in there early doors. Yeah, look, he's just had his legs taken out from underneath him. It's a definite pen. That is some sloppy stuff by Tarkowski. Yeah, absolutely just does the training leg of Garnacho. And get in there, guys. We've got an early chance here via the penalty. And uh, yeah, good stuff, good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Um, SG says, Guna here. I'm only here for the tantrums. Well, get out there, mate. You better go tune into the Arsenal Hollands then, aren't you? Uh, this is the poor man's version of tomorrow's game. Robbie, what are you talking about? I see what you mean, like a Manchester side versus a Liverpool side. I see what you mean. Now do one. Okay. <laughs> right, it's a penalty. Bruno Fernandes is going to step up for this one. Come on, Bruno. Up against that, this is England melt. Is Bruno going to gonna pop it past this Pickford melter? Yeah, that's a good shout, Tommy Boy. I believe we, are, we have uh, got some interest in this, in this guy from previous rumours, but we'll see. Okay, Bruno Fernandes steps up here then, guys. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Come on, Bruno. Get, get, get your Bruno emojis ready, guys. Bruno Fernandes, the captain of Manchester United. He steps up. Big breath. Puff of the cheeks. Bruno Fernandes. To make it 1-0 for United in the 11th minute. Bruno steps up. Get in there, my son. It's into the bottom right-hand corner. Pickford dives the right way and maybe gets his fingertips to it, but he's unable to keep it out. Fucking get in there, my son. Come on, Bruno. 1-0 to United. Get in. After 11 minutes, we've got the lead. That's what I'm talking about. Now, let's go get a couple more. But, yes, nice start there. They've gifted us an opportunity. Alejandro Garnacho scythed down there by Tarkowski. Very clumsy. Who gives a shit, though, mate? Because we've got the early need. There it is. 1-0 to United. Fucking come on. Pickford dives the right way. Very nearly gets there. But, you know, you shit, lad. <laughs> come on, United. Bruno Fernandes gives us the lead. It's 1-0. There it is. Beautiful. It feels quite rare when we get an early goal these days. Generally quite a rare thing. There it is right there, guys. Right, let's update the score. There it is. It's updated. Beautiful. Good start. Now let's build on this. Go get the second. Everton are our whipping boys, to be honest. They genuinely are. Great penalty, that one. Absolutely great penalty. Great celebration. Great penalty. Um, hey, th what's going on there, Mustard? How you doing, mate? Welcome in. Dad Salford. Thank you for the Bruno emojis. Oh, Chris Jones, mate. Get well soon. You're in... Uh... You're in hospital, man. Can we get some can we get some get well soons in there for Chris Jones? Sorry to hear that, mate. Much love to you, bro. Bloody hell. Oh my god, McNeil from distance. He very nearly gets it into the top bin. So Nana was rooted to the spot. But it's just wide of the left stick. Crikey. Look at this first time attempt on the old left boot by McNeil. It's decent. Mate, we got away with that one. It's like a foot wide. Very close. Yeah, let's get some big love in there for Chris Jones, everybody. Sorry to hear your uh you know. Not well, mate, in hospital. That is gash. Yeah, get well soon. Absolutely, Luke CX, you legend. Let's go, Luke. <sighs> True, Maria Steer, I agree with you. I don't even think it was a soft pen. That was a stonewall pen, if you ask me. I don't think that was a soft pen. Garnacho's literally had his trading leg, like, full-on taken out from him. It was very poor defending, very poor sloppy stuff by Tarkowski. I don't think it was. I think it was a stonewall of that one. Luan France, get in there. You said Pickford looks like he's from Little Britain. Did I say Little Britain? Or did I say This Is England? He looks like the little kid from This Is England. Who could he look like in Little Britain? I'll leave that one alone, <laughs> actually. <laughs> but anyway, get well soon there, Tyler, lad. It is. Well, it looks like obviously things are being put in place now to revamp Old Trafford. We'll see what sort of materialises there. But it does look like, obviously, they put a task force in place now. Yesterday, there was a big, big bit of news that that's happening. 
uh, Sebastian Co getting involved and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, yes, there's going to be some sort of regeneration going on there, which is obviously massively positive. Yeah, let's see that. Let's hope that they do do it right. It was soft, but most pens today are soft. Tarkowski ruined Everton's fairly decent start. My score prediction is 4-1 at the start of this game, Gary Finnegan. Yeah, 4-1 to United. Just fancy it, man. Just fancy us uh, having a good day at the office today. Last time we beat Everton, I think it was 3-0. Everton a gash. Sean Dyche football. You know, we've got the lead now. I just don't see them really troubling us at all. Um, and we should have a good few chances. We should be able to convert a good few chances. Oh, shit. Offside? Offside? Yeah, offside. McNeil is better than Anthony. He should come back to United to replace him. Oh, shit. Kieran. Oh, man. Get well soon to Kieran as well, man. Sorry to hear that. You just come back from the hospital yesterday. Oh, shit, dude. Win would cheer you up. Definitely, Christine. Duffy, thank you for the uh, thank you for that. Kieran, definitely feel better soon, mate. Win definitely cheer you up, yes. Always switch off when we go 1-0 up. You know, knocking down Old Trafford is very sad, but this is the way top in football. Well, yes. Okay, so, yeah. So, in terms of uh, regenerating, you know, knocking it down, building it. That's the way that you get to be, you know, to have the, the top state-of-the-art facilities, the biggest, best stadium you can have. Retrofitting or, or revamping the current stadium, it has its problems, you know. It has its problems. There's, there's, a, there's only so much you can do. Um, it will still have its problems. So, yeah, I believe that in the grand scheme of things, it probably is better for the football club to, to rebuild. But goodness me, I mean, there's no more an iconic stadium out there, is there, than this this Old Trafford. And it will be a ridiculously sad day if it's knocked down and, um, and replaced. But what do you reckon, guys? Do you want do you want um, do you want to revamp? Do you want to uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? You know what I mean? Do you want, do you want to uh, re rebuild? Not rebuild. Sorry. Oh, shit. Ganacho Bruno oh, over the top of crossbar considerably there. Would you like to uh, just completely re rebuild the stadium, knock down and start again? Or would you like to um, rejuvenate? That's a good word, Stuart. Yes, that's a that's, a, that's actually not the word I was looking for. Renovate. That's the word I'm looking for, Burby. Yeah, Re renovation. So uh, I'm kind of torn, really. I am. I'm kind of torn about it because, like we've said, it's kind of limiting a little bit to what you can do. But there's such a history and such a, a legend at Old Trafford at Manchester United, like... It would be a shame to lose it altogether. It would be a shame to lose it. But at the same time, as I say, to get the biggest, best state-of-the-art facilities you could possibly get, you would have to rebuild from scratch. Build, Clean the piss, that's enough, says Dynamic Kid. Build uh, new need to or go into need to keep fixing. Yeah, that's true, Jason. They could do it at the Burnabout. They could do it at Old Trafford. I mean, yes, Fun Chainsaw, yeah. But it's like anything, isn't it? If you're like retrofitting or renovating like a property or whatever it is, you're still you're stuck with like the initial plans to a degree. Yeah, you can knock this wall down, knock that wall down, you know, but heights, depths, sizes, all that sort of thing. It's like you are kind of limited. Whereas if you just knock the house down and start again, you could build whatever else you want. That's that's the, that's really what it's about. But um, I don't know. There's so much character and so much history there. It seems a shame to let it go. Thank you, Stoic Savage. Yes, Stoic Savage has twat that like button, piglets. Thank you, Stoic Savage. Thank you for hitting the like. Everyone who smashed that thumbs up on it. Yes, please do do that. It would be a sad day, yeah. Uh... <coughs> oh, I don't know about that, Maria. I mean, obviously, Sir Jim Ratcliffe's just come in. Like, there's obviously going to be a new, a new direction. So they are supposed to be dealing with the football proceedings or the, the you know the, the the football decisions are supposedly being made by any Austin Sir Jim Ratcliffe. It's only just come in. You've got to give him a chance to see what he can do. Um I personally think that, you know, yeah, there will be big investment in the club over the next couple of years because of this new investment that has been put into the club, i.e. the Glazers generating all that cash from selling twenty four percent whatever whatever the hell it was of the club again now. Oh shit. They've just had a shot over the top of the crossbar. But um yeah. I could have forgot what I was talking about, but yeah. Nice one. Oh, crikey, Stephen Shipman. Fair play to you for getting up, though, and watching the game. 6 a.m. here, mate. We, we better win. We're going to win. We're going to win. Yeah, definitely. Renovated. Yeah, it's limited. More girth needed. <laughs> that's what she said. Go on, Tommy Boy. Yeah, no, that's right. You do, that does need a bit more girth, mate. Good idea. 
Just to add new ones, we get top state-of-the-art facilities for both players and visitors, though I agree it would be sad to knock down such an iconic stadium. Doing the wrong one, it's needed. Yeah, that's it. It's like it's like I was lucky enough to go to the old Wembley Stadium with the Twin Towers, you know, back in the day for an England under-21s game back when I was probably six or something, you know, really young. And um, it was iconic and awesome, but ultimately, you know, there's only so much they can do with it. It's old. It was old. You know, so it's iconic as they come and awesome and iconic as they come. But if you want to get to that, you know, that global standard of facilities and stadium like the new Wembley Stadium, then you have to make the new Wembley. You can't fix the old one. You have to build a new one. And that's kind of what's going on with uh, with Old Trafford as well, sadly. OK, Everton coming at us down the left. They're certainly still up for this, though, Everton. Nice, you went to the old Wembley to watch Michael Jackson, our fair player. I mean, New Trafford works, Jason. Yeah, it does. Hello there, Saeed. What's happening? Yeah, it works. New Trafford works, doesn't it? Oh, it's too early, guys. It's too early over here. <clears throat> Right, throwing back towards the halfway line there for Everton. Paul Rudd, what's happening? He says, come on, United, we will get Conference League at this rate, and this bonus helps send the blue and white shine down. Ah, oh, fucking hell. Yeah, man, you know it. Tommy, old Wembley was epic. Watched under-21s and there, but never an England game. Yeah, I watched under-21s of uh, England versus Holland, it was. I seem to remember. It's called Old Trafford because the area is called Old Trafford. Okay, but well, what, what then? New... New Old Trafford? You know? <laughs> um, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, I guess you could, yeah. New Old Trafford, you can't call it New Old Trafford, though, because <laughs> it's a full-on oxymoron. I don't think you could do that. The Ineos Stadium, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, don't they dare. Don't they dare. Oli Khan, I agree, mate, very much early for me, mate. Yeah. Hey, respect must play. Yeah, so that was bombed like back in the day, weren't it, man? During the war. Brick building a new ground would count against FFP2. Newton Heath, get it? I see myself out. Yeah, that's true, Cake Net. I mean, so so what would you call it then? <laughs> new Old Trafford? I mean, that's fucking gash. You can't call it New Old Trafford. Not so Old Trafford. <laughs> new Trafford. You see, I, I vote for that, but Cake Net's got a massive problem with that, apparently. You know? <laughs> the Glazer Dome. Hey, what's happening there? Yeah, they should call it the Glazer Scullet Dome with a gashtastic ponytail on the back, lad. Oh... How you doing, Cinnamon? You absolute hero. I hope you are good, mate. One of the absolute heroes. Chance to watch the interview. I haven't seen it yet, you know, Thomas Sanfield. I've seen a bunch of clips. I've got to sit down and watch it, mate. No, I, I really want to watch it. But I've seen a lot of the headlines and a lot of the clips. But I haven't sat down and watched the whole thing yet, no. I mean, I just love Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. What, what a top guy. I just love the guy. I mean, don't always agree with what he said. Like, I saw a little bit where he said, oh, you know, players like Fred and McTominay give you seven or eight out of ten every week. And Keener was like, really? Fred give you seven out of ten every week? You what, basically? You know, I don't think that McTominay's ever consistently given us seven or ten, seven or eight out of ten every week. Same goes for Fred back when we had him. But, I mean, Fred was better than McTominay, to be fair. Um, but I just love Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. What a nice guy. What he did for this club as a player and as a manager deserves mad credit, particularly as a player. I mean, wow, what one of the one of our best ever in, in terms of goals, assists, big game moments. Incredible. I didn't see that solid two card, no. Corner in for Everton. Oh, my goodness. Johnny Evans takes a fall. Yeah, it's not looking good at the moment, is it? Passing been rubbish today. I think we might be one of the worst passing sides in the whole league in terms of just, like, ball retention and doing useful things with it. We're actually really poor at that. Like, look at the last few games, the amount of times we turn over possession, gift counter attacking opportunities. It's insane. Bloody hell, it's freezing today, man. Just putting the heating on again. 
Devil's Cauldron would be a good name. <laughs> the Devil's Cauldron. Hang on. Don't witches use cauldrons, mate? <laughs> Maybe devils do as well. Oh, shit. Shot on goal. Oh, no. That makes the stop. Oh, my God. There's another shot on goal. It's over the top of the crossbar. I'll tell you what. United are looking fucking ropey and shite. Wake up, you zombie-laden zombie land twats. Woody Harrison's going to pop up in a minute as a substitute for us for Pete's sake. This is slow, mundane, and dreary. And Everton getting in the game chance after chance they're having here. It's another shot on goal. It's a good stop by Onana. It's over the crossbar for the uh, second chance, thankfully. Otherwise, United completely undone. Everton are banging this game. They're banging this game. United are so erratic with our passing, ball retention. We get turned over so quickly on the counter. We are filth. We are still one goal up, mate, yes. We are, we are. But tell you what, it won't last long with playing like this. Danny McHale, thank you for the two euro super chat, bro. Yes, lad, he says fans complain about Anthony and Rashford, yet Greenwood. Well, you know why that is, Daniel McHale. So, it's because those guys are have been pretty shite on the football pitch for us this season. Mason Greenwood, when he was on the football pitch for us, he was pretty fucking good, mate. And he was young. Really, really good player is Mason Greenwood. Shame he's a dirtbag individual but i mean bit of a yeah nah what are you on about <laughs> you know what are you on about <laughs> but you know what i mean this is going to be another lucky win but we are shite you know i put no effort in yeah berber says i prefer my players to not be sex pest exactly that's it mate coming at joe cuts in shoots blocked ideally that would be nice wouldn't it berber if they're not yeah <laughs> Everton's better team so far I, I agree with you, I agree with you, I agree with you You know, the goal really is against the run of play here Garnacho's down on the ground Well, it's not all about It's not all about the possession But just based on chances as well And like where the momentum is Ooh, Garnacho's been trodden on, man Filthy, stamped right on his on his foot there That's awesome. I'm glad they got arrested, Prolang. Ah, oh, that's, yeah, dirtbags. The Ratcliffe Stadium. Now, it's got to be United-related. So, I don't like it. I don't want us to sell out and be, you know, the the maxi tampon stadium or something or anything like that. I think it's very important for us to retain, you know, retain something, that, that history, retain that heritage, not sell out completely. I mean, everybody does it these days. Everyone sells the name and rights to their stadium, more or less everyone. But I don't want us to become that sort of team. But we probably will. It's just a way to generate cash, isn't it? They probably will sell the name and rights to the team. Oh, my goodness me! Bruno Fernandes, what a free kick! It's an incredible save by T-Rex Hands Pickford. He's managed to stretch that T-Rex hand out somehow. Make a great stop. Bruno Fernandes with a great free kick. It's going in. Pickford gets across. He does really well. Yeah, he's got that T-Rex limb out there. It's a great, great opportunity. Great free kick by Bruno. It's looking like it's going in there, but it's a wicked stop by Pickford, to be fair to him. What about naming... Uh, if you're not going to call it Old Trafford or New Trafford or New Old Trafford, what about naming it after um, like one of the legends of the football club, you know? I mean, maybe that's harsh to name it after just one. You know, maybe that's harsh because there's just too many legends, but, you know, they've they've already got stands named after players, I guess, but and ex-managers and stuff, but... Nah, they can't name it. So Bobby Charlton Stadium's got a nice ring to it, though, doesn't it, Gary? Yeah. All the, uh, all the Sir Alex Ferguson Stadium, mate. <laughs> Call it latest Old Trafford, George Best Stadium, the Remy Moses Stadium, the Cristiano Dome. Sir Alex Ferguson Stadium, I love it. Robson Charlton class human beings. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. The Robson Charlton Ferguson Stadium. <laughs> New Rashford, best stadium. Yeah, you like that. David Moyes, Gareth's bedroom, bloody hell. Sonics Ferguson Stadium. Yeah. Call it Tampon Stadium. It's a bloody mess. Oh my God. Easter Island Stadium. <laughs> Come on then, boys. Gone Nacho. Yes. Feeds in Rashford on the left side. Rashford brings it into Everton's half now. Rashford doesn't like to pass the ball, does he? Rashford switches play this side. Time's a good ball to the wide right to Bruno Fernandes. He does well. Now, uh, playing into McTominay. Back across, go Maynou! Oh, oh, man. Maynou just approaching the edge of the six-yard box for a tap-in. Brantthwaite gets in there with some nice challenge there and does well. Gets across Maynou to deny him 
the goal scoring opportunity. But good play by United there. Nice par par pass out to the wide right from Rashford. Bruno does very well. It's a very good by McTominay back across goal towards Maynard. It should be a tapping, but Bramthwaite's done brilliantly and just got his leg in. There's a last ditch tackle from Bramthwaite. He's done brilliantly. Yeah, Duke of Rodtown. Absolutely. Yes, that's true. Flying Pig Stadium. <laughs> yeah, that was a nice phase of play right there, Superstar, for a second there. Yeah. Theatre of lazy fuckers. Maybe that's the one, actually, bro. The Theatre of Dreams. Hey, Gavs Highlights, what's going on, mate? How you doing today, my son? Right, I'm going to read it now. <laughs> what about just the Theatre of Dreams? Now, I know that is the nickname for the current Old Trafford, but Theatre of Dreams is pretty pretty uh, iconic. That, that, could, that could work. Although it's a little bit on the old, you know, side of things. But Tommy says, Theatre of Dreams, surely. Theatre of Screams. It'll be named after whatever big corporation gives the Glazers the most money. Sadly, you're probably right. They've they've uh, they've neglected to do that just yet, haven't they? With naming rights for the stadium, but they have like sold naming rights to like you know like the trading complex and stuff. So yeah, I could see it happening. I mean, lots of teams do it. Almost every team does it actually. Sells their stadium naming rights. It's just a way of generating really loads and loads of cash, isn't it? It's a big billboard for whatever company wants to plaster their name on it. it can generate huge cash. Every team does it, but there's just something iconic about Manchester United's Old Trafford in particular. Maybe with the new stadium, if they built a new stadium, they would just they would just name it, you know, the the fucking Churchill Car Insurance Arena or some shit. Who knows? Yeah, no, nah, this is not great performance by us today whatsoever, boss. The melt melt paddock says like warrior. The theatre of dreams it was presumptuous guff. It is a bit like that, Hoff. Yeah. It is a bit. It's a bit of a gash name, yeah, in that sense. The Glazers Stadium. How about Red Devil Arena? I mean, I like it. I like it. I like it. Fellaini's Afro Arena. Old Trafford. Churchill Car Insurance. Oh, oh yes! <laughs> you know? <laughs> Overpaid Melt Stadium. I like your style. Why is this far slab of a brick player? Who's that you talk about there, John? I like that, though, Cootie. I do. So Alex Ferguson Stadium. Right, hang on. Br Bruno! Oh, sloppy pass in, but it's going to be kept in by Rashford at the uh, far post. Gavs highlights who scored our goal. It was a penalty by Bruno Fernandes, mate. Garnacho was brought down in the box. Bruno's tucked it away. Pens, lad. Casemiro. Bruno. Dallow on the right. Dave Watkins, thanks for becoming a member, Dave. Bruno Fernandes, another penalty shout for a handball. Penalty shout for handball. Bruno's livid. Captain goes up to the ref. He's saying it's fucking Pens, lad. Or he was grabbed or he was fouled or something. He's protesting with the ref. Don't know what he's saying. Let's have a look. Referee says no, nothing doing here. Bruno feels like he was fouled here. What? That's fucking handball, mate. That's a pen. Okay, it is accidental, but that is actually a penalty at the back there. Bruno's right, I personally think. He's handballed it and taken the ball away from Bruno's foot with his limb, with his hand. So that is a penalty. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck's going on there. Why is that not being looked at? Why do we always get stitched up by these gash officials, though? Yes, okay, that would have been a ridiculously soft penalty. But I'm telling you, by the letter of the law, that's a fucking pen. Should be, should have the VAR looking at it. What do you reckon, guys? Pen or no pen? Malp says never a pen. Slidish Paul says not a pen. Well, a few years back, I'd say, oh, ball to hand, you know, it's not a pen. But if we're going by the letter of the law, it's hit his fucking hands, and it's gone away from Bruno because of it. So in my opinion, that's a pen. Yeah, the RAC Arena, in case Ollie's ever at the wheel. Harsh, mate. Ollie was actually decent there, Scousy Red Lad. Why don't you go and fucking look at your history, mate, with your gash bloody, gash tastic bloody Roy Hodgson and fucking Kenny Gaudish and shit like that, you know, doing mares, man. Look at Brendan Rogers' vibes, mate. Even Jurgen Floppy Cloppy Chloppy's only won one title in the whole time he's been there, you bloody losers. Oh my god. You've got the audacity to have a go at Ollie. Shut up, you tart. Your team's gash. You've only had one decent manager in the last fucking 20 odd years, you twat. The elite teams all over Europe shouldn't have to change the name of stadium. The names are too iconic. San Siro, Bernabeu. Exactly, exactly. Exactly. I mean, everybody will still just call it what it actually is anyway. It's like when St. James's Park changed to fucking Sports Direct Guff. 
Garnacho's going all the way. It's another pen. It has to be. Yes. Penalty given. Alejandro Garnacho. Just call my name. Just call my name. Alejandro. Just call my name. Just call my name. He's the winner of penalties for us today, mate. That's two pens won by Alejandro. It's brilliant run from him as well. Look at this. How he's just taken it in there. Direct running by Garnacho. Causing absolute carnage. And he's drawn the foul from Godfrey. It's carnage from Garnacho, mate. He's an absolute looking beast when it comes to... Riding up the opposition, he's the he just creates things running at players, and he's done it again. There, it's another penalty won by Alejandro, and it's a stone water as well. Definite pen. Marcus Rashford stepping up for this one. You what? Fucking hell, give it Bruno, lad. Go on, Rashi. But Rashford's taking this one. Nice of Bruno to let him have it. You know, he, he does need a goal, Rashford. He's having a shit time of things, really. He scored a couple lately. That goal against City the other day was a banger, but um, yeah. They're giving him the penny. I don't really want Rashford taking this, though. Bruno's just... Bruno, they call him Bruno Penandes for a reason. Why the fuck's Rashford taking this? Get but come on, Rashi, lash it, my son. On the Lashford, Rashford, he steps up. Rashi's going to take this one. Michael Brunelli, thank you for subscribing, Michael. Yes, mate. Okay, Rashford steps up for the pen. Marcus on the Lashford. Rashford, Gashford, is he going to be... Or is he going to be... Mashford, Mashford in the bot, in the, in the, he steps up, little hops, giving it up. Oh, it's a fucking cool penalty. Get in there, my son. Come on. Yes, mate. <laughs> Have some of that Everton, you shite, lad. Even though you've been in the game and it's been a fucking to and fro affair right now, end to end, and you've had your chances. Ultimately, you're a bunch of dirty bastards at the back, mate. Sean Dyke's tactics, giving away pens left, right, and centre. Lucky you haven't given away three pens in this game. United lead 2 0. Job should be a good one. Get in there, my son. Marky Rash with a great penalty to be fair he's just confused Pickford a little bit there with his steps you don't really stop those it's right into the sort of inner side netting on the left post there it's fucking beautiful it is a lovely pen by Rashford he's done bits it's a fucking lovely penalty by Rashford it's absolutely lovely pen get in there my son come on it is a pen though end of the day you've got to be taking that if you're a professional footballer you know <laughs> get in there guys it's 2-0 United come on this is what we needed Cheeky chilled out day at the office, my son. Let's batter these toffee melts. Get that toffee hammer out and keep smashing them into pieces here. Four, four goals. I want to see four goals from us today. <laughs> Must play says Burber, he showed you. Oh, yeah, he really showed you there, didn't he? Really showed you by scoring one pen. <laughs> you know? <laughs> he has been crap all season, mate. This guy needs to seriously give himself a kick up the arse. Big time. Ah, he's uh, he's been a great he's been a great player for us in the past. Like I said earlier on at the start of the show, I still want to give him one last chance to come back and be not a complete, absolute, unprofessional melter and win us games of football and be a good United player. He is an academy product. He is homegrown, but this season is just absolutely unacceptable. If he's going to do such things, he needs to, you know, get back to the consistency and the form and just the actual mentality of uh, last season, for instance. Inner Tama, thank you for the super chat here. Thank you for the super chat. It says, who is the guy with Gashtastic in your intro? I don't know, mate. It's probably Phil Jones or Maguire. <laughs> I'm not too sure, actually, boss. Not really too sure, actually, now. Good question. Yeah, we've been quite lucky here, the mustard. I don't know, Alex Walker, mate. Maybe, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit. I'm trying to lose weight since the turn of the new year. I've had a bit of a ropey couple of weeks where I've been eating like a madman. But yeah, no, I've got back on track a little bit here. 300 grand a week to score from 12 yards. <laughs> uh, did I change my title to 2 0? Let's have a look. Uh, no, I didn't. Thank you, Gav. Thank you, Gav, for reminding me. I did not. You're a legend, dude. Cheers for that, Gav Stallard. Hey, we got 250 likes on the stream, guys. We just smashed 250. Let's get this sucker to 400 likes by half time. We've got seven minutes until half time. Please do hit that thumbs up button. Help us get to uh, 400. Nice one. Chris Law says, wow, second best all over the pitch, but two up. It happens. It happens. I mean, it's their own fault. Everton, how sloppy do you have to be to give those two penalties away, though, in all fairness? Like that Godfrey tackle on Garnacho was so clumsy and gash. And that Tarkowski one earlier as well was just ridiculously awful. Like, yeah, that's just their individual errors at the back. Yes, we might not have been the best, but you can't... This is it. They're, they're, they're even bigger bottle jobs than us, mate. They are absolute bottle bags. That's what they've done. They've just given away two goals right at the start. 
Tom. Yes, Tom says, hey, everyone, hope you're well. Come on, Nitro, we've looked awful, but garnacho has been a bright spot. Garnacho's mad, isn't he? I, I, yeah, in, inspirational with the way he just directly takes it towards the opposition goal every time, mate. He's got to be one of the most effective direct sort of players we've actually got in terms of just making things happen and, and uh, causing problems for opposition defences. He is a brilliant, brilliant dribbler. Brilliant. Seems to have that that one-track mind of let's fucking get a goal, which is what you need. He never gets caught in two minds, it seems, Garnacho. It's a very important mental skill to have. He's quite, he's a decisive player is what I'm saying. He's decisive. Whereas you look at like Rashford, for instance, he's very indecisive when it comes to like those positions. Should he take somebody on? Should he shoot? Should he cut in? Should he get in the, you know, he's an indecisive super, player. Whereas Garnacho just seems to make it happen. Um, John, thank you very much for the super chat here, John. He says, United are so bad, but so are Everton. We are guff, yeah. Everton making it a contest of pure guffness. Who's guffer than the other? We'll find out. Looks like it's Everton who are going to be the guffest team today. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you, Glenn. Uh, yes, I did, mate. It was actually really easy. It was like 300 um, points for a win, even in Div 6 or whatever it was. So yeah, I just got a few wins and then got the points back. Yeah, that was a calamity. Um, Tom, yeah, not too bad, mate. Not too bad, mate. So so, struggling a bit, but so so, mate. You know, all right. Been worse, super, I think. Super chat. <laughs> Taz Salford, thank you for the five pound super chat. You can, you can, you can. Taz Salford, super, happy birthday to you on Monday. Chat. Awesome microphone of yours. Um, <laughs> Taz Salford, mate, thank you so much for getting in and with the five pound super chat. Happy birthday to you, dude. One of the long, long legends of the channel, Mr. Daz Salford. Thank you for being here. And thank you uh, for getting in and letting us know it's your birthday Monday. Happy birthday to you then. Let's hope United give you a cheeky little birthday present here with a 5-0 dis destruction of these Everton mugs. Thank you, Daz. Let's get some big love and a happy birthday in there for Daz Salford, mate. Happy birthday for then, dude. Everton are guffer than guff. Yeah, me too. Me too, Susan. Me too. It would feel wrong if they were gone, to be honest. John, thanks for the 199 Super Chat. Says Man City, though. What? Kings of what? Kings of cheating. Don't be ridiculous. Nobody would call them the kings of anything, John, because, as I've said, they're, they're just Ill, they're, they're, they've got ill-gotten gains. That's all it is, bro. Anybody could do that. Anybody could do what they've done by cheating the system, mate. They'll be found out at some point, mate. Yeah, can't wait for it to happen either. Yep, definitely. Mate, John, sort yourself out, bro. Nobody respects Manchester City around here. Not one person in this chat other than the couple of City fans there, and they respect City in any way whatsoever. We respect Liverpool, we respect Arsenal, we don't like them, but we respect them, but none of us respect your shitty City. None of us, mate. Cheating wankers. You don't deserve any of your success, so none of us respect you. Please don't mention that name in here again, because you gash. You like Aguero, and that's where it ends. You like Aguero. Aguero's a great player, but you like him, do you? You know what I say about Sergio Aguero, mate? Fuck that guy. That's what I say. Are you joking? <sighs> right, okay. Uh, corner in for Everton. Oh, I can't do that, Dad. So, no, I haven't got the... Uh, I haven't got that set up for the watch-alongs here, bro. <laughs> super, super chat. John says, ain't you cheating by relying on flukes? Oh, yeah, because flukes is cheating, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice logic there, John. Yeah, flukes cheating, mate. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What a fucking absolutely demented comment, lad. Oh, my God. Thank you, Uncle Gwendolyn. Yeah, you know it. You know it. Like, that's just how it is. It's Everybody knows it. I, I keep banging on about it, and I'm sick of banging on about it, but at some stage, unless... The corruption of the world is just too far gone. Some stage they will be punished and they will have to face consequences. Now, if you look at other sports, when somebody has won things, when somebody's won things illegally, i.e. by cheating and gaining an unfair advantage, taking drugs or cheating or match fixing or whatever it may be, they do get punished. When they're found out, they get punished. And what happens with with City? Who knows? Maybe they'll get severely punished. Who knows? I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for the day. Oh, Bruno Fernandes, shot on goal is a poor one, blocked by the defender there. Pickford manages to get it there. It is 2-0, Seth. Yes, it is. Super, super chat. Thank you, Christine Duffy. Appreciate you. John, well, thank you very much for the 
But, you know, uh, you know, fair enough. You know, everybody's welcome in here, mate. But it does annoy me that you sit these gunbags actually think you are, you know, the mutt's nuts, mate, these days. You are a very good side. As I've said, your players are great. Your manager's great. Your coaching's great. You know, the system you play is great. It's boring, but it's great. It works. It's effective. But how have you done that? How have you got to that stage? By cheating? By laundering? By overinflating? Looking earnings in order to justify expenditure, breaching financial fair play regulations, all the rest of it. You are the definition of ill-gotten gains, definition of cheating scum, and at some point, you shall be found out, mate. And uh, I will be looking forward to that day. <laughs> like, what are they? Oh, dude. I'm a breaker of things. Crit says, sorry about that comment. I retract that comment. I don't even know what you said there, Crit. Sorry, bro. Did I read it? Wait, we've got Garnacho and Bruno Fernandes in the box. Oh, he's tripped up. Oh. Handball penalty. Handball penalty. Handball penalty. Handball penalty. Garnacho has almost got a hat trick of pens for us here. He's played the ball back across the six yard box. Mikalenko comes in. It's a fucking pen. It's a fucking pen! Yes, it is ball to hand! Yes, he has put his hand down as he's sliding in there! It's still a fucking pen by the letter of the law, isn't it? Why has this not a pen? Oh, okay then. <laughs> apparently, apparently, there's a definition, the commentators just said the definition, his arm is supporting the slide as he's sliding, and his arm is on the ground. And it's supporting the slide, so therefore it's not a penalty. All oh, right. So from now on, just coach your players to just slide in there with both their fucking arms out like this, mate. You know, it's ridiculous. That's fucking ridiculous. He's used his hand to deny the ball going into a goal-scoring opportunity. I don't understand why that shouldn't be a pen. I don't care that his arm's behind him. He's fucking sliding in erratically with his hand behind him. It's hit his hand, which has stopped the ball coming in. It's a fucking pen, mate. Stupid. It's just stupid rule, that. If that's the, the actual definition of the rule, that is a stupid rule. So you can slide in and support the back of your body with your arm, and as long as your trailing arm is the is, is what stops the ball. I mean, that's just ridiculous. <sighs> yeah, you've got to give that as well, the mustard. I'm with you. We should have had four pens in this game. 100% penalty, says Dimitri. Those are given all the time. Yep, that's the third time now. Guys, pen or no pen for that incident there, where it's just hit Mikolenko's trading arm. Uh, that's, a, that's even more of a pen than the last one, if you ask me. Go on, Kami Maino! McTominay! Casemiro, Daisy Cutter from distance. Blocked. Alejandro Garnacho now. Casemiro. Lindelof! Oh! Lindelof curls one from outside the box uh, into the, the waiting hands of, uh, of Pickford, but decent effort there. Stadium should be called Hell. <laughs> Theatre Dreams works as well, yeah. Nice one, Biata. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, you know this. Spoke too soon. What's the most penalties in the game? Because United's going to break it at this rate. I wonder, actually, Go. That's a great question. Uh, yeah, penalties an open player in a game. I don't know. I don't know, you know. Yeah, I'm going to. I've seen lots of clips of it, Eugene. If City get renegated, they'll still win the league again before Man United do. I mean, that's definitely not true, is it, MJG? I mean, what a ridiculous comment. Because if City actually get relegated or anything happens with their own, they, they haven't got the fan base, haven't got the, 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 the history, the legacy. You know, it just goes away overnight, mate. That's that's what it's about. It goes away overnight. Like Abramovich's Chelsea. So, no. Ball fit into Garnacho, 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 Garnacho! Oh, Garnacho. Should have got the ball in earlier to, to Rashford, potentially at the back stick there. Oh, but he's done He's done well, but it's a really good tackle to deny him. What's that, Cake? Piggy, answer your quiz, please. What's that about, Cake? Piggy, what are the most? What are Manchester City most famous for? A, playing in blue. B, winning the treble. <laughs> or C, money laundering. Love that there, Cake Cadet. Out of those three, um, hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it's got to be. It's got to be the cheating, hasn't it? It's got to be the cheating bastardry. 
That's what it has to be, yeah. Good shout. Or D, having no fans. You got no fans? You got no grand? If you want some, I'll give it you. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Free chance for Everton. Great block, Johnny Evans. Done brilliantly there. Goodness, that was just an absolute free setter. We looked so ropey at the back there, man. Lucky, yeah, Johnny Evans got a nice block off, but the organisation from United is guff. There's the half-time whistle, everybody. Man United lead Everton 2-0 at half-time. In, in actuality, I think we're actually unlucky not to be leading by more. People might say Everton looked good in that half. They looked like they had their chances. Yeah, they were pretty decent in that game, to be fair, so far. Apart from at the back. They've they've let themselves down at the back. They've given away penalties. In my humble opinion, we could have had three, maybe four penalties. So, yeah, no, this is going exactly as it should be going. Everton too rubbish at the back with their defending, too, too reckless. And Man United taking advantage of it, getting into those danger zones. I mean, Garnacho is absolutely causing them all sorts of problems with his running into the box, with his direct play. He's causing them big issues. And uh, they, they don't really have an answer for it at the moment. They're just, yeah, they're, they're last-ditch tackling, giving the ball away, give, 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 giving penalties away all over the shop. So, yeah, this should be an easy day at the office really here for United. Uh, have we played brilliant in that first half? No. I think it's fair to say the passing's been erratic. We have looked pretty ropey on the break again in terms of teams breaking on us. Counter-attacking too easy for opposition sides. I don't know what it is. But very much lacking that organisation at the back again. It is a mishmash side of players who, you know, are not... Half of them aren't first-string players, so it's a bit mishmash. But even so, not playing great. But regardless of that, we are winning the game 2-0 at half-time, getting there, my son. It was a Rashford penalty, Simon. So we got two penalties in this game. Bruno Fernandes' first penalty, and then a Rashford penalty after that. Yeah, I'm with you, Mustard. Three out of ten and a half. Need to watch our second half. Yeah, great shout, man. Great shout, I minute. Mean, we're lucky that Everton didn't just bang that free-sitter chance they had at the end there, because it would have given this game a very different complexion going in at half-time if it was 2-1. But as of as of right now, two 0 We've got that two goal cushion. If, as soon as we, if we get another goal, the game's dead, obviously, and we're definitely in the driving seat. But uh, get the money on their non-existent fans, precisely like Warrior. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like where does their actual input in terms of revenue and commercialism actually genuinely come from? Okay, now they're successful. They're winning trophies. They're getting prize money, and I'm sure their commercialism is is big now in terms of like being able to sell sponsorships. But don't pretend like they got their you know by anything other than just absolute debauchery hey have a good one there berber enjoy mate thank you for getting in the stream you don i appreciate you let's be having you have a great afternoon my son oh nice one everyone we got to 313 likes thank you everyone for hitting the thumbs up yes 313 at our time beautiful definitely jonathan yeah let's well firstly let's just let's rate the team performance out of 10 from man united's point of view guys if you've been watching that first half please do give us a half time rating i'm gonna say four four out of ten yeah, we should be 4-0 up in this one, so I'm not going to say 0 out of 10. We, we've looked ropey at the back. We've been a little bit suspect in terms of ball retention very much so. That seems to be a common theme at the moment for us. But we're in we're in control of this game, and we probably should have been 3 or 4 up, if we're being honest. So I'm going to say at least 4 out of 10 here, but it's not a great display. Nice one, Daz. 3.69, says Crit, from what you heard. 0, says Robert Koff. Four out of ten, good defence. Five only because I didn't expect United to score. Two, totally unconvincing. Now nah, you're right, you're right, you're right. It is, it is. Uh, five out of ten, we've been so sloppy. Kept seeing City on those high standards list for years. Never believed that was possible. They don't have the global footprint to grow that fast. Yeah, exactly, superstar. You're spot on. Now, there's no way that, you know, without cheating, there's no way that uh, City generate more cash than Manchester United or Liverpool or Arsenal. There is just no way. They don't have the global support that those clubs do. Uh, Luke Street, yeah, long lit. Well, they certainly didn't a few years ago. Obviously, I'm sure they've got a new, a few new fans now who have been, you know, brought along with the glory and all that. Eight out of ten, five out of ten, and that's because of Garnacho. If we are this sloppy against Liverpool, we are in for a rough one. Is that the next game? Is it, guys? Liverpool on the seventeenth. Dudes, um, we are starved of football right now. Is is it me? I think it's just yeah. It's because we're so crap. We're not we're we're not in any competitions, are we? But it just feels like there's been hardly any Manchester United football on for the last few months. It's actually gash, isn't it? There's no football on, mate. Like it's it's like every fucking ten days we've got a game or something, mate. We need to have a better season next season. I tell you, it's so shit. It's so shit. This has been an absolutely horrible season, man. I just wanted to finish, to be honest with you. 
What's happened to the icon next to my name? Greg L, you've been a member now for three years, Greg. Thank you. Can we get some love in there for Greg? He's been a member three years. So you have now got the Don hat. You are a mem member of the of the three-year Don hat Dons, mate. That's what that is. That's why it's changed. Hope you don't mind it. But that's just to indicate you've been a member for three years, bro. What a legend. Thank you, Greg. Seriously, thank you so much, Greg. That's amazing. Let's rob a city bank and now we are wealthy. We'll go straight legitimate. <coughs> I know, Superstar, because we're out of everything. I know, it's a shocker. We should be in the Champions League. We should be in... It's fucking shite, mate, honestly. I, I'm I'm so annoyed by the lack of uh, football uh, over the last couple of months. And just going forward, it's just gash, isn't it? Not satisfied with United midfield. We need the reincarnation of Iniesta. Need a new manager again next season. Tenag is a melt. Mm. Yeah, well, he'll probably be going in the summer, mate. Um, if if he does go on an incredible run, they might give him another chance. But with Ineos coming in, they're not going to want to spunk hundreds of millions on, on Ten Hag with his track record so far and who he's bought and who he's melted. And, you know, so they're not going to do it. So, yes, I do believe that probably Ten Hag will be gone. Let's ask the chat. Let's ask the chat. Not, I'm not asking you what you want because, you know, I'm not asking you what you want to do with Ten Hag, no. But I'm asking you, what do you think? Ineos will do in the summer. Do you think they'll stick with Ten Hag or do you think they will sack him off and get somebody else in? Let us know. I mean, I am I am of the of the theory that they probably will want a fresh start with somebody new based on this season and based on what we spent and based on who we recruited and all of that. So I, 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 I'm going to say I'm going to say that we, we, we sack him in the summer, but I don't know that. Obviously, who knows? Maybe he goes on a decent run and Ian Herbert, what are you talking about? Ian, have you been watching the game though, Ian? Thank you, Ian. But, you know, have you been watching the game? Because those penalties that have been awarded for us are definite stonewall penalties, mate. They're stonewall fouls. Arguably, one or two others we should have been given as well. So, uh, you're, you're off base there, lad. Luan Francis, we've got 329 likes. Thank you so much there, Luan. Everybody, keep hitting the thumbs up button here at halftime. Let me just catch up with the chat, guys. There's a lot of comments coming in here. Sorry if I missed any of your questions or comments here, guys. A lot of legends in here, but big up yourselves for joining. Thanks for everyone who's in here watching the games with us. You'd rather players go first, as Daz. Why is United Sheffield game postponed? Um, is it because of the the FA? Because we got through to the FA Cup? Uh, I'm not sure actually. I'm not sure actually. Can't do a build of the same shit just like putting glitter on a turd. Uh, <laughs> keep Ten Hag for another year. Way too harsh. Players are shite. Well, that's fair, but that's fair. But he spent four hundred million and bought half of the players that are shite. If we're, if, if we're being honest, you know, I tell you who did have quite a good record of recruitment is Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. I was just looking at a list of the players Oli Gunnar Solskjaer signed the other day. He did pretty well. He did pretty well, the lad. I mean, I know it's not necessarily him signing them but you know what i mean like the players we brought in during that spell were actually pretty good whereas these signings under ten arg half of them have been gash i mean think about anthony dos santos we spent 85 million and, and if he never plays for man united again i won't be bothered that's sort of how convinced i am that he's never going to go on and be elite maybe i'm wrong who knows but from what i've seen i mean he's got one facet to his game and that facet is gash so uh yeah you know that's an 85 million pound signing mason mount 65 million pound signing what a waste of money andre onana did we really need to get rid of De Gea? No, not really. Andre Nana's looking good lately, but we spent a huge amount of money on him when we probably should have just kept De Gea. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not overly convinced with Ten Hag's recruitment in general and, and putting the money into him to be able to invest another couple hundred million in the summer. I'm not so sure they're going to want to do that. What's the handball real word? Turns out it depends entirely on the incident, Scott. Like, for, for instance, that handball, the last one, where um, Mikolenko's just slid in and it's hit his training hand that's behind his body on the ground apparently that's okay they, they said that that's by the letter of the law that's okay because it's a, it's a supporting arm on the ground that's leaving a very gray area though people can exploit that i think that's bullshit should be a stonewall pen in my opinion that one so yeah oh i know waza doing great with the old punditry man respect to waza man what, what don yeah respect to this guy those two are so unnecessary it's everton's own fault so true yeah that the actual two incidences with can't actually be inside down. We're very, very sloppy, poor defended by those melters. <coughs> Hello there, Jane and Peter Caramales. Let's go. Let's be having you my sound. <laughs> Anthony Mount. Yeah, Onana. Mikato says should have been a penalty would have been given if it was against us. You're probably right. You're probably right, Mikato. No, I'm with you. I do think that was an absolute pen. Yeah, absolute pen. Should have kept a Gea and bought another striker. 
Smash a one in the chat if you agree with Nick. I totally agree with you, Nick. Imagine if we'd have not bought Mount, not bought Onana, and just spent that money on a top striker, you know, take your pick. As well as Hoyland. Get Hoyland as well. As well as Hoyland. You know, like, okay, Kane might not be the most realistic, but Kane or an Osterman or just fucking somebody who's going to get you some goals. You know what I mean? It would have been, uh, it would have been better. Lots of ones in the chat agree with you there, mate. Look up Jorel Hato, dude, 18 year old centre back at Ajax. Very promising young player. Oh, not any more Ajax mounts, lad. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Yeah, that sounds good. Thanks for the recommendation there, Tommy. Tenag will already probably have him on the old uh, shortlist, lad. <laughs> to be fair, it's probably better to lose and at least uh, score goals than to be battered anyway and not score. Osterman would have been great. Kept De Gea and got Ings. It was passion today. Yeah, I know, I know. I know. I mean, there's obviously great talents that are going to come through Ajax, though. Ajax is like a hotbed of brilliant talents and always has been, to be fair. In fact, if you go back like 20 years or even into the 90s, like just they had in, I mean, pff, they had an insane crop of players. And they think about all the players that like went through Ajax in the 90s. It's mad, isn't it? Zlatan, fucking Kalani Vert. Fucking, you know, the list goes on and on and on and on. It was, it's, yeah, they're just, a, they're, they're, they're a hot bed of talent. They always will be because they're the biggest Dutch team and Dutch, Dutch, the nation of the Netherlands produces great talents. They've always have done. So they always will be a good place to try and sign players from. But I don't think it's necessarily a great recruitment idea to just go and buy all of our players from Ajax because Ten Hag likes them, you know. I, I think we need a little bit more than that. But Man United, you know, yeah. We've got to sign. Super, they are a class yeah. football in operation. They absolutely are. Yeah, they absolutely are. Stacking, no, they're not having a good season this season. But in terms of like their setup, their you know their youth network, everything's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Hello there, Stacky De Mikes. Yes, mate. James Dunn. Thank you for the super chat. How have you been? No worries there. He says long time since I've been in here, pig. Hope you're well. Life is just crazy at the moment. Little Bambino on the way. Hey, congratulations there, James Dunn, my son. <laughs> Thank you for still being a member all this time. And good day from Dan Under, you legend. On way, United still breaking our hearts. Oh, it's a tough season there, man. It's a horrible season, James. It's the sort of season I just want to be over with now, yeah. Finish it. Finish him. Fatality. Get over here. That's what we need this season just to be done. Thank you, James. How are you getting on, though? Good to, good to know that you're still out there, though, mate. And uh, congrats on the Bambino. That's awesome news. Let's get a congrats in there for the lad, guys. Thank you for the super chat as well, boss. Yes, congrats to James, everyone. I probably am going to do that crazy. Joe, what's the early fix as well? Villa versus, uh, is it Arsenal? No, no, it's not. They're playing later, aren't they? Uh, who, what's the early fix, Joe? I, might, I could do a double header tomorrow, crazy Joe, because there is uh, two big games on. There's a, who, oh, damn it. What's the first fixture of the game tomorrow, of the day tomorrow? Bollocks. That's it. Yeah, Villa Spurs. Thanks, guys. So it could do that and then could do the uh, the Liverpool City game after. I was thinking about it. Yeah, I was thinking about it, guys. We'll see. We'll see. Spuds. Villa v Spurs. Spuds. Villa Spurs. Yeah, nice one. At Ajax, they uh, teach one-touch football six aside from five years old. That's why the academy is so good. They move up to eight aside on smaller pitch. Then That's how it should be. I, th I think, that, like, you know, think about when if you played youth football in England, I did, and you're playing youth football on these big pitches, and it is just long ball football most of the time. Maybe not these days, but certainly when I was a kid, it's like fucking kick and rush guff. This is why I think Spain and, and uh, Brazil and all these teams, they're, they're playing fucking street football. They're playing futsal. They're playing futsal. It's like small pitches, tight spaces. It's all about the short passing game. It's all about ball retention. It teaches you to be a better passing player if you grow up playing futsal compared to growing up playing lot you know 11 aside on a big adult pitch it makes no sense i'm with you i think that's why yeah i'm with you you should be playing if you're a kid you should be playing futsal basically five aside is small well maybe not five aside like seven what was my position a goalkeeper mate and also a center forward lad occasionally Banging the goals, my son. Fat Ronaldo, eat your heart out. The whole, the whole club should play one way from youth for the first team. I hope the new guys come in and establish these structures properly. You hope 85k. So what? Here they teach you hoofball from two years old. Whole club needs one identity. Yeah, exactly. They they do. 
Hey, what's going on there, mate? Yes, Shahid, what's going on, Piggy? Hope you're well, mate. Been a long time. Remember watching your streams from HMP The Mount in 2020. Yes, mate. I think United need to be consistent like you. Dude, it wasn't 2020, was it? You've been in here. You, you've you been in a lot more recent than that there, Shahid. Lad. <laughs> and when I mean been in, I don't mean been inside. I mean been in this chat. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, you know. But I hope you're well anyway, lad. Susan says, Coys win tomorrow. Imagine this ends 3-2 to everyone out of our classic vid big pro. Fingers crossed. You know what, Gav? You know what, Gav? That's, that's, almost, that's almost worth taking your spanner away from you, mate. <laughs> you know, that sort of comment there, bro. Can't have moderators, fingers crossed, in the fucking gastastic Everton victories, mate. What are you doing? <laughs> Get out of here, mate. You know, I preferred you when you were called Jamza, mate. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. No, shout out Gav's highlights, man. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> right. Uh, let's get this second half underway then, guys. About to kick off. Get the timer up in the top right-hand corner. It's about to get underway. Everton going to kick us off here. Come then, United. And there's the timer in the top right-hand corner. Hey there. Hey, yeah, Aaron. What's happening, Aaron? Great to see you there, Aaron. What's going on there, mate? Do the Rebecca Vardy voice. I can't do Rebecca Vardy voice. Do you mean what? <laughs> what? I can't do Rebecca Vardy voice, wait. Hi there, Aaron. Been on the sunbeds. What? No. What are you trying to say? <laughs> trying to say I look red. I mean, I guess, I guess there is a little bit of redness going on on the old forehead there, my son. But no, I haven't definitely haven't been on any uh, sunbeds. Oh, Gung Shirley Oni. Oh, Gung Shirley Oni. Oh, Gung Shirley Oni. Get in there, my son. Come on. Gung she's gifted out 10 members on the channel, guys. Fucking let's go. Thank you so much for your incredible generosity. As always, Gung you're a Don. Thank you so much for that, mate. Big love to Gung everybody. Rain down the love. He just gifted out 10 members on the channel, my son. Get in there, you beauty. Oh, thank you very much. He is a hero. He's an absolute hero, M. He is a hero, M. The the uh the membership. You got ten new members there. Corrupted, Jamie Mackey, Little Nathan, Bat Mouse, Daniel Schaefer, Cascade, Alistair Saint Clair, Louis Velez, Kevin. Oh, thank you so much there. Thank you so much to the one and only. He is the one and only. Nobody quite like Gungshi. Let's go, Gungshi, mate. Thank you very much, dude. Absolute hero. Hope you're having a great old day of it, by the way. It's actually um it's actually a normal time for a for a game of football for you for a change, isn't it? It's like early evening there, is it? Pretty nice time for a game of football for you today, for a change. Just before bed. Really, Chris O'Hagan says Gungshi gave me membership last time around as well. Ah, oh, he's a Don man. We call him Throbbing Hood around here, mate. <laughs> we don't, we don't, we don't. But, yeah. He gives to the needy, mate. <laughs> Look at that. By the, you know, sometimes people do gift out members on it. You have to select, uh, you have to like, you have to like select it somewhere in your settings. I can't remember it is now, but if you want to accept free membership from a gifter, you have to actually say you want it. Garnacho for on go is he offside? He is offside, he is offside. Thank you, Gungshi, you hero. Absolute hero. Total legend, Mr. Throbbing. <laughs> uh, he is Throbbing Hood, mate. Kevin Bosner. You know what I mean? Legend Gungshi. Thank you, Alistair Sinclair. Yeah, just get a hashtag Legend Gungshi in the live chat, please, guys. I really do appreciate that. That's immense. Uh, Smasher one if Pickford just winds you up for no apparent reason whatsoever. Smasher one, he does my head in, mate. <laughs> it really does annoy me. Just, it's just the, it's the sight of the guy. Okay. Um, ooh, chance now for uh, for Everton. It's it's well wide. Going to see the Don. The timer. What's wrong with the timer? Oh shit, the timer's wrong. How's that happened? We're too far ahead on the old timer, guys. Apologies. Right, yeah. A little bit ahead of ourselves. Let's wait to sync up here. Susan says your sound's weird, is it? Oh, God. Breaking up. What? My sound's breaking up. Oh, shit. I've missed the timer thing now as well. The mic shot, is it? Sounds fine here. Okay, let me test it out. Testing, testing. One, two, three. 
Seems all right. Seems all right. I don't know. Seems all right, guys. Mic busted. I have headbutted this microphone way too many times. Way too many times, guys. Way too many times. Your sound is good. They need to refresh. Oh, okay, just give it a refresh then, please, guys. Sign's fine for, fine for me. Nice one. Okay. Yeah. I've headbutted it a lot of times, Mark. <laughs> you know, this this microphone, actually, to be fair to him, can I just shout out HyperX? They, they don't sponsor me. They, 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 didn't, they don't send me no free microphones, but fuck me. The amount of times I've abused this microphone over the years and it's still trucking. Like, fair play to HyperX there. That's a, that's a good quality product right there. <laughs> oh, it was lagging, right? Okay. Oh, thank you, Julius from Kenya. Where else are you all watching from along the world, guys? Let us know. Let us know where you're all tuning in from around the world. We have got Kenya in the house. Chair as well. <laughs> yeah, true. The chair takes a pound in there. Saint Neots in the in the house. Cardiff, Canada. London, Isle of Man, Ontario. Lovely. Droitwich, Singapore, on your bed. You bet Pickford's got a lowered voxel astro with pinstripes from really annoying loud exhaust. He's a right chav. If he wasn't a footballer, yeah, he would have like a, a 2001 Subaru WRX, mate. <laughs> 100% when he just would. <laughs> Brisbane, New York, Scotland, in the shed bar. Yeah, change it to Pickford like button instead of twat the like button. Thank you, Susan. Cape Town, Connecticut. Looking beautiful. Indonesia, Vietnam, Malaysia, Detroit. India, Goa, Singapore, Bolton. May thank you everyone for getting in here all around the world. That's beautiful. Oh shit, Decore! I think Decore's their top scorer this season as well. Chance for Decore. He can't add to his tally there though. Rashford brought down. It's a throw in though. <sighs> nice Freddie Lewis, mate. Getting near from Oz. Good day from Dan Underbro. Shit, Skippy, the dingoes are after us. Run! We are international, Cootie, 100%. Scotland, lovely. You know it, Chris, you know it. Are, are we having lagging problems? I'm hearing we're having lagging problems. That's really not good. Fucking hell. I don't know why that is. That's YouTube's fault, that is. It says zero drop frames, my end. So it's not my fault. It's shitting YouTube, that is. My internet's fine. Um, no, I don't, Gav. What, you as in Chelsea? No, I don't, Gav. I don't think you'll be anybody at the moment because you are literal Poodoo Magusa. Certainly not Newcastle, no. Yeah, give it a refresh, give it a refresh. No lag. Okay, thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. That's nah, bullshit. Thank you, Tommy Ball. YouTube's playing up, not you. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you, Glenn. <laughs> Thomas Sanfield, ironic is it? All of the signings we have done, I feel e Evans has been one of the best one. No, he has actually. He has been very solid. What a signing that was. It's probably our signing of the season in, in terms of how much he cost, which was nothing, and what he's given us, which is quite a lot. Yeah, he's actually been a great signing for us this season, hasn't he? It's a shame we can't say the same about some of our other signings. Mount's been the worst signing ever. Oh, no, no, has been okay lately. I'm, I'm sort of actually holding out hope that he is going to just be a consistent beast for us now. He had a ropey start, but I'm, I've actually been very impressed with his recent, like, confidence, turnaround, and just consistency for us. So, you know, hopefully he can really be a good player for us. Um, on the other hand, yeah, there's also been some shite. Evans has been great, hasn't he? Hey, Susan Lively, Sue, you legend. Let's go. He's got that dog in him, 100%, yeah refreshing oh restart youtube sorted it thank you mate jason chapman what's happening jason great to see you great to see you there jason chapman thank you peter yeah nice one johnny evans nice ball forward as well to bruno we've got space on the on the right for days for going back to the box alejandro oh great chance alejandro such a good chance He's just trying to bury it into the roof of the net there, beyond Pickford, but it's just over the top of the crossbar. It's an excellent, nice, swift move by United. All started by that man we were just talking about, Johnny Evans. Bruno plays a perfectly inch pass there. Garnacho should bury it, to be fair. He should bury it. It's a real shame. He should bury it. He'll be gutted about that. He should bury it. But uh, yeah, obviously, you know, bearing down on Pickford at his near stick, he's got to bury it in top bins. He nearly does. It's not far away, guys, but yeah, just a little rush of blood to the head there. 
Ghana, always one of our better players, if you ask me, always. Certainly today, he's the game changer for us. He's the, the most effective player that's created the most and done the most and contributed the most to us winning this game, really, so far. You've got to say that. So, yeah, it's usually the case. He's basically our best player these days. He's basically the player that turns up. He's got that dog in him. He's got that hunger in him. He really does seem to be just relish playing for this team and wanting to give it his absolute all every time. Oh, my God, Scott McTominay! What a pass by Scotty, a.k.a. the shittest pass you're ever going to see. That's what he's not... That's not That's not Scotty's forte. But, goodness, Rashi was making the run in behind. Got actually done right. Perfect chance. If, if somebody could have just waited a decent ball into Rashi, we're in with a goal-scoring chance. Unfortunately, the person with the ball there was Scott McTominay. His passing is notoriously gash. That was a good try, Susan. He's been excellent again today. Uh, I am Daniel. Yes, mate, I will be. Absolute mon. Neck to get in there. Good morning there, Daniel. Yeah, you know this. Oh, Aaron Cannon, mate. Sorry, I missed your super chat there. Aaron Cannon. How have you been, Mr. Cannon, lad? Bringing that cannon, lad. What? <laughs> Thank you, Aaron, mate. Come on. Let's get some big love in there for Aaron Cannon. No message to go with it, though, but just pure love. Aaron Cannon. Get in there, Aaron Cannon. We're seeing a couple of changes here for Everton. Let's get some love in for Mr. Cannon, guys. Wait, Sean Dreich. Sean Dreich drinks water. No way. I thought he'd drink liquid hot lava, the guy. With that fucking voice. You know I mean, there he is on the sideline sipping that H2O. Uh, we need that Adam Sandler water boy in here, mate, because uh, this hasn't got enough gravel in it. This, 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 uh, this sports mix hasn't got enough gravel in it. He needs some extra gravel in his water, though, because how is he going to work on that voice if he, if he doesn't? It's crazy. Yeah, he's got a crazy voice. That's <laughs> Sean Dyche. It sounds like he's been on a hundred fucking Marlboros a day for 40 years. My name's Sean Dyche. I'm the uh, manager of Everton. And yeah, we signed Tarkowski over from Burnley because, you know, he's my best mate. And he lives in my shed and he helps me hunt for worms at night to have for breakfast in the morning. He's an absolutely top lad. You forgot what other lineups? Right there, my son. Right there, my son on the right. Pause it if you like. It's all the ciggies he smoked back in the day, maybe. Hello from Manila, Manila lad. Thank you for getting you in a predicting 4 0. Love that. Okay, what's everyone's prediction for the finish of this game then? Mm, I'm going to say 3 0 now, actually. I, I, my prediction at the start of the game was 4 1. I expected lots of goals for United today, I expected us to concede one. I no longer think we're actually going to concede, and I think that we will score another one. So I'm going to say 3-0 now. Straight vodka in a water bar. Hey, it could have been actually the big beard. That's a great shout. 2-1. Bruno Fernandes takes us how to talk to you, and I will be in the car park. Min's late to get to the last time I was like, Min's late to go to the last time I had to do it. And 40. Who the, f what the, f who the fuck's this guy? <laughs> 3-1 says Sevcam, 3-1 says Tommy, 3-1 says Mark, Cinder says 3-0. Ooh, they've almost, uh, they've almost had a chance. So Nana makes a good save at the near stick. It was going right into the bottom corner at the near, near post. A good stop by Andre Nana there. 2-0 says Chris. Me and my pops think 3-1. 3-2 to Everton, rather 3 United. 2-1 says Nectar, 3-1. Uh, maybe Thomas, maybe, 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 maybe. But I do feel like Everton are a bit of a gash team. But in saying that, they've definitely had their chances in this game. And arguably, you could say that they've actually been better in a lot of ways. Not in terms of key moments. They've given away lots of uh, weak penalties and stuff like that. But other than that, they've actually probably been slightly better, I think, than us. Because of, you know, they've, uh, they've, they've, they've considered they're the away side here as well. They've had a lot of possession. Look, second half possession, 60% to Everton. 60% possession to Everton in this second half. Possession doesn't win you pr prizes, but still, it's an indicator of how they're playing. They're looking quite comfortable. They're working around. They're having chances. So, yeah, but I don't think they're going to score. I think we're, we'll get one against the run of play again and, and just do them like we did last time at Goodison. Um, I have been watching it a bit. I, I, I love loving it, mate. Loving it, Tommy. Yes, absolutely loving it. Big time. Once again, thank you for sending me that dartboard, man. I, I, you know, I chuck a few arrows a day, mate, me. At least. 
just a few a day, mate. But yeah, love it. Thank you very much for that. May I say, Piggy, what a smashing blouse you have on. Hey, <laughs> Adrian Morris, thank you, you may. Bruno Fernandes! Bruno Fernandes got back to the back post! Oh, no! Just a little bit too much extra hot sauce on the pie there from Bruno with that pass across goal there. And it's just fallen to Alejandro at the back post. He's making that run into that space. He just can't quite wrap his boot around. It's just slightly too far to the right for him. Just too much uh, extra hot sauce on it from Bruno. Simon Cowie, thank you for the uh, for the super chat, Simon Cowie. Let's go, Simon Cowie, bringing that heat. Thank you, Simon. Get some love in there for Simon. He says, pig them two penalties and Everton's poor attempts. We got lucky. We should win 2-1. Garnacho has been good and will grow. Yeah, no, fair enough, Simon. I, I have to admit, I, I, I basically agree with what you say there, really, yes. So, I, I mean, lucky and unlucky, actually, because I think we could have had another pen. I personally think we could have had three penalties in that first half and this game could have been completely gone. So unlucky in that sense, but then lucky in the sense that they have defended so badly those incidences and just given us easy pens. <laughs> Let's be real, we're very fortunate that they've given us easy pens in this game because we haven't been able to make a breakthrough in regards to putting the ball in the back of the net in open play yet, have we? Yes, we've caused some problems in their box, which is why it's led to the penalty, but yeah. No, I actually actually think you're right. I think, I think Everton are looking decent, mate. And uh, if it wasn't for their attempts, like you say, their final final product, we would be in trouble here. We would actually be in trouble here. Thank you so much, Simon Cowie. Garnacho has been excellent as well. What a beast. He's my man of the match so far for United. Easy. What about you guys? I mean, it's only 60 minutes in. But yeah, Alejandro Garnacho is, is uh, impressing me the most out of everyone again today. Very good. Johnny Evans looking brilliant. Onana's looking very good. Johnny Evans, yeah. Those those few are shining for me a little bit here. Big up yourself, Stephanie Griffith. Uh, now I've been liking people's super chats, um, Chris. Yeah, almost every super chat that I get, I uh, smash a, a, a love heart on. I don't know if it's not showing up on your end, though. But yeah, I've, I've got that feature, yeah. The butcher is all iced here, which is not fun for me as I dislocate my knee on Monday. Oh, fair play, Susan. That's awful. Fucking hell. Rest up. Hopefully that's... Oh, dislocated knee. That sounds awful. Get well soon, Susan Lively, too. That's terrible. Much love to you. How'd you do that? Yeah, flat second half here, Johnny Gals. Yeah, nothing lucky about it. We should have had three, really. I just mean lucky in the sense, I guess it's lucky in the sense that um, Everton just just imploded in, in, you know, those couple of moments fouling us when they really sort of, you know, they were bad. They were they were very, very easy pens to give away. They just... Bruno Garnaccio! Back across goal! Oh, cut out this time round by Everton. Yeah, no, they yeah, were the, the like easiest that. penalties to give away from Everton's perspective. Very, very poor defending by them. Eight likes away from 400 likes. Nice one, everyone. Keep hitting those thumbs up. So let's get this sucker to 100 likes. He's amazing, old Kobe Manu, isn't he? Bruno Fernandez. Oh, it's another good fingertip save by uh, T Rex in goal, Pickford. Bruno Fernandez, little daisy cutter across towards the far left of the goal. And it's a good attempt by Bruno, but uh, it's a good fingertip save there by Pickford. Yeah, or, or Angel Gomez, yeah? We talk about Angel Gomez. Thanks, thanks, Piggy. I just popped while I was walking at work. Oh, no, nasty, nasty. Do you, do you remember when David Beckham did his um, Achilles tendon? And he'd like, I think it was his Achilles tendon, maybe his ACL. No, it was his Achilles tendon, wasn't it? Where he just like stepped back. He was just literally on the pitch. I think he was playing for AC Milan at the time, was he? And he just stepped, or maybe it was LA Galaxy, I can't remember. But he just, oh, from the corner. Oh, no, Pickford smothers on it and gets it just before. It's a little pinballing around there. We're trying to just bundle it over the line, but Pickford smothers it. Pickford smothers it. What was I saying anyway? What was I going to say? Can't remember, mate. Can't remember. I was saying something. Callum, yep, FIFA tonight, mate. Absolute mon. Beckham's injury. Oh, that's what I was talking about next. Yeah, but <laughs> Beckham's injury, yeah. That was just from him, like, stepping backwards. Remember that? 
It can happen any time, can't it? You can just go and you, you can just go any time. Wow, final third passes in the whole match. Everton have had 71 passes in our final third. We've only had 47 in their final third. Fucking hell, that's terrible. That's actually really gash. Sort of tells you the story, really. We have to say that the old overall... Oh, yeah, we're winning this game 2-0 and everything, but you have to say, like, the overall style of play of this United side in, in recent weeks has... It's been dreary. It's been dreary. Go on, then, Cassie lad. Ah, super, shit. Super chat. Hey, thank you so much, Adrian Morris, there for the super chat. He says, "What's your thoughts on Sir Jim's stadium plans, Pig?" Yeah, I mean, I think th I think it's a necessary evil for us to basically like reach our potential as a football club to basically rebuild, rebuild. You know, you kind of got kind of to knock Old Trafford down and rebuild. Unless, I mean, there's so much history at Old Trafford, but you are very limited to what you can do. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm on board. I, 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 we need Manchester United to be at the cutting edge of everything, really. Facilities, stadium and everything. Team, everything. So, yeah, it's just another step in the right direction, I guess. It'll be very sad if Old Trafford isn't there. It's such a... Just a storied place. Oh, my goodness. In our box, another chance for Everton. We've cleared it away, temporarily at least. I personally think Casemiro's looked gashed today, Johnny Girls. What we are winning, says the Cake Cadet. Yeah, true, but mm, I guess that is kind of the only stat that matters. But mm, also, no, because we're looking at a lot of the, the game. And yes, Everton have actually had a lot of good chances. If not for them making fouls and errors at the back and giving away pens, this is still a nil-nil game right here on a knife edge. So I'm not so... I think... Yeah, I guess. I mean, certainly it's the only... It, it, fundamentally, that's what it comes down to, though. You're right. Where would we play while it's been built? Well, we certainly wouldn't do no ground share guff with those city mounts. 100% no. I personally think, and this is very unpopular with anybody who's actually like, you know, up up by Manchester in a season ticket order, for instance. But I personally think Wembley would be fucking awesome. Just for however long it takes. Because, cause, you know, Wembley would be... I know it's in London, right, guys? I know that's crazy. But what else are you going to do? Go and play in fucking the Reebok Stadium in Bolton? Or... You know, uh, Ewood Park or some shit. Like, what about... They, they're going to have to... These teams are going to have to play their games sometimes as well. Like, ground share is tricky. It messes up the fixtures. It messes up the... It's just difficult. So, I personally think, like, an unoccupied stadium, like uh, Wembley, w w w would work. Burnley's ground, yeah, it's going to be like something like that, isn't it? Salford, say, it, it would... If, you ha if it has to be in the local vicinity, it's going to be It's going to be that. It's going to be something like that. Um, think about extra revenue as well like there'll be a big drop off not that it's really something that I'm that bothered about but you think they would be hugely bothered about it is the match day revenue from ticket sales and, and uh, all that sort of stuff will be massively affected if you're having to ground share and it's a small capacity stadium compared whereas if you just had it at Wembley you know, you, know, you can get you can fill the stadium up every single week with 80 odd thousand fans or however many and um, literally capacity, it would be good. Keep the fantasy companies happy. Well, well, that's it. I mean, look, there's a lot of fans of United that aren't just from Manchester. I do think it's a bit crazy to expect actual Manchester United like season ticket holders from Manchester though to travel down to Wembley. That's crazy. That's not gonna. That's just not gonna happen, is it? But it won't happen. But I still think it's a good idea though. But it won't happen. Super. It'll probably super be like chat. Bolton Wanderers ground or something. If we did a ground share with City and gave them any sort of percentage of our revenue, then we're absolute twats. We can't do that. I'd rather play down the local fucking wreck with, you know, than play at City's ground, to be honest. <coughs> <coughs> Cinder says, we won't need to share. Build new, then change when done. That's mental, lad. <laughs> hey, uh, Kenneth Kernan, thank you for this super chat. Hey, Kenneth Kernan, put your hands up for Detroit. Thank you very much for getting in here from Detroit, lad. Kenneth Kernan says, we need one more to relax. We are one shite. We are one shite toffee goal away from squeaky bum time and broken plates. 
Onana's down on the ground, but not our Onana. Everton's Onana. He has been brought down by McTominay there. And he's holding his leg like he's a bit injured, but I think he's absolutely fine. But Scott McTominay does commit a foul there. And he has been booked. It's a yellow card for Scott McTominay. Yeah, JW, you always have done, JW. There's a lot There's a lot of big teams that ground share. There is, but that's like that's what they do. That's their thing. It's not our thing, you know, but that's their thing. San Siro, that's their thing. It's not our thing, mate. Like, we are not going, you know, we're not jointly sharing the Etihad, mate. That's filth. Yeah, exactly. They do have plenty of spare seats, though. Exactly, we'd get fill it up, there, we'd fill son. it up for a change. If City get justice. Mate, thank you for subscribing there, Azizi. Yes, guys, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. We're on our way to uh, 80,600 subscribers. Hit the old subscribe button down below if you're new. Get yourself sub sub subbed up here. Jets and Giants aren't rivals and have fans that chant, let's go. You are <laughs> some American football vibe, is it? And they share the same stadium, I'm guessing, in New York, right? Okay. Interesting. Ah, you see, Tommy says they didn't use to though. Inter played at the Olympic Olympico originally, another great stadium. You forgot City bailed you out during World War Two. Maybe I did, what, when uh, our stadium was bombed or whatnot? Yeah, but fuck City, mate. <laughs> They're just cheating bastards, aren't they? Got no respect for him, mate. Don't want to be sharing anything with City. Let's go, Reds. Mustard says, wait until City demolition for all their dirty cheating, then take over their ground for a season. <laughs> wait, who was that they just panned over to? Was that Gary Oldman? Only for a year to go for a new stadium. Mm -hmm. Yeah, big time Simon Cowie. Let's get some get well Susan there for Susan. Yeah, she's uh that's not good. Rest up, Susan. I hope that um you know gets back to normal for you very soon. Use Goodison. That's an interesting one. There you go. Gary Oldman in the put in the in the in the stands, mate. Awesome, it actually was. Yeah, man. Good old Gary Oldman. What an actor. Guy's a fucking beast actor. Crazy good actor. Like how he can just like change roles into uh, maybe he could uh, play the play the role of a of a manager for a, no but yeah he uh, he's an insane actor isn't he that guy looking old he's looking older well it's only going to change so much isn't it Jay it's it's not going to change too much of like the the football operations of how we recruit, of how we run things, of the training, of the coaching, of the play style, of all of that. It's not going to help change much of that, is it? It's going to, it's going to give us what we need, though, to f fulfill our potential as a club. But, um, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't instantly mean you're going to be any better off, you know? He's the crazy cop from Leon. Um, <laughs> right, yeah. We're getting older. We'll be bigger stadium, which means bigger revenues. Yep. That's it. His best role was Winston Churchill. I've never seen that one, actually. <coughs> Gotta say, the stadium for atmosphere for the Europa Cup has been excellent this year. Some brilliant stadiums and fans, atmosphere, etc. I mean, that is one thing that will be sad once Old Trafford's gone, is that it's just, it is a it is a legendary stadium. Oh, man, it's too early, guys. It's too early. It's a legendary stadium. Tommy Paul, like, have a year off and do a stadium tour around Europe. That sounds good. Kim says, bigger stadium equals more empty seats. Yeah, if you're a City fan. Solitude says, who else just yawned? Yeah, if it got a bit snooze-festy, this one in the, in the uh, second half. BS4, not too bad, mate. How's you doing? No subs yet. 
You read today they want to demolish Old Trafford, rebuild it right there, keep it same some of the structure that's already there. Neville apparently is going to have some say in what happens. Yeah, there was a bunch of information that came out yesterday about this new task force. I mean, obviously, we've got to wait to see exactly what the uh, situation is, but it does look like they will be knocking it down and rebuilding. United have had a big fan base. They've got to fill the stadium with no problem. United could fill 100,000-seat stadium, no dramas. Yeah, easy. Easy. If Old Trafford was 100,000 seats, they'd fill it up every week. I'm, I'm, I'm certain of that. Here comes Ashley Young. How's Neville going to have a say? Um, uh, I mean, who knows? But he's apparently involved in some sort of this, like, task force or whatever, yeah. Who knows? Obviously got a lot of love for the club, so hopefully any sort of... Uh, it will be out there or, or with the best interest of the football club. 413 likes. Thank you, guys. We hit 400 likes. Let's go. Hey there, Stay Gold as well. Welcome in. Agreed. This is a shite display from us, mate. Now, it was a 4 out of 10 in the first half. Second half so far, 75 minutes. It's literally a 2 out of 10 from Man United. We, we are creating very little. Everton having all the joy in our third year. They are again in our box. Just passing it around, working the chances, and we, we're inviting them in back into the game. Header on goal for Everton! Oh my god! It's gone across everybody in the six yard box. Calvin Lewin gets a shot off, maybe cross comes shot. And it's gone through everybody out the other side of the pitch, mate. Should have been a goal for Everton. We're so lucky today to not have conceded. I don't know how we've not conceded in today's game. We are so lucky. Look at this. Oh my god. The shot across goal. Calvin Lewin's waiting for it there. He can't get a leg on it. It's bloody dodgy. It should be finished off. You know what I mean? This is what I'm saying, though. This whole second half has been like this. It's all Everton. Why are we allowing Everton to play football? Like, why are they looking like the better footballing side than us? And we're the home side. We've got a 2-0 lead. Like, come on. This is shite from us, this half. This is shite. Dreary shite. Oh, what a player. What a career. It's incredible, actually. Yeah. Incredible. And he still looks like he's about 25. Shout out Connor for starting his own chicken burger van, mate. That's all, that's awesome, dude. Go on, my son. Thank you, Seth. Appreciate you, dude. Yeah, that's very nice of you, mate. Best Oswald Dracula church want to be. Oh, he's brilliant in True Romance, actually. Yeah, you, you actually forget that it's bloody Gary Oldman. He's like playing some hardcore, like, fucking pimp guy. You'd never know he's from the UK, would you? Yeah, they have. They look pretty good at this moment, Everton. The, the goal's coming here, guys. The goal is coming for Everton. You can just see it. Oh, my God. Overhead kick outside of the box there from Onana to Onana. Bit of Onana on Onana action. Bloody hell. Overhead kick from Onana towards Onana. It's a good hit. Decent attempt. Really, very soft, but from where he is, dipping under the crossbar, Onana makes the stop. Yeah, he's in Leon. yep. Yeah. I've never seen The Firm. That's one of those ones I've got to watch, yeah. Oh, Ashley Goals. Oh, I never... Yeah, I never forget Ashley's goals in uh, in that 8-2. Those two absolute curling beasts to the top bins, mate. They were so good. I'll never forget that either. That was mad. Sloppy from Rashford there. Gives away the foul. Ten Hag is a big problem. He doesn't have a real midfielder on the bench. Amrabat isn't the one, and Eriksson doesn't have legs. I mean, that's fair. That's fair. But you've still got, you know, Cassie and uh, Mainu and McTominay. You know, we should... I personally don't think he is a good midfielder. But he should be able to do a job against shitting Everton. On comes Amrabat. Speak of the devil, he shall appear. Here he is. Kobe Mainu substitute off. He's had another good solid game. I've never, ever, I don't think I've ever seen a game of from Kobe Mainu ever and thought, you know what, he's pretty gashed today. He's always, at the very least, 6, 7 out of 10 solid, which is another good performance from him today. He's barely put a foot wrong. Solid, okay. Not his best, but again, he's always pretty, he always gives it as well. I really do like Kobe Mainu's input into this side. You know, he's, he's, He's out Sean Cassie today, for instance. Casemiro, in my opinion, anyway, you may disagree, but I think he's had a bit of a ropey game. Whereas Cobby's just, he's, he hasn't really put a foot wrong, I don't think. Amrabat on, yeah, Amrabat is on, yeah. 
Oh, Nana, oh, no, Nana, that sounds sick and big. <laughs> Meant like in changing the game now. I'm about to shit to Seth. Need to push for another goal. Mm -hmm. Big time. A nice one there, man. Hey, thank you very much there, uh, Simon Warner. Yeah, I oh, no worries, Simon Warner. Feel better soon, mate. Bloody hell. Very underrated. That's the case with a lot of ex-players Fergie had at United. It shows you it's not enough to be talented. You have to put in the work to maximise the talent. Spot on. Very true. There's been many a player who you might think have average talents, but because they've got an elite mentality and work ethic, they get to, you know, the top of the game. Then there's countless other players who have all the talent in the world because they don't have the mentality to match. They don't achieve anywhere near as much as they should. Mentality is probably 80% of it, really, or at least 50% of it in regards to where these pros finish up and how they how their careers go. I think the mentality is the most important thing. Ten Hag shutting up shop instead of uh, pressing for a third risky. Classic Ten Hag, classic Ten Hag. I, I personally think he would shut up shop um, if we were playing Yeovil Town and we were 5 nil up. You know, like he would he would still go to some defensive guff style. I don't understand. You know, uh, hello, good day there. What's happening, bro? Good day from Dan Under. Nice one, Rom. Thank you for joining from Dan Under, my son. Looks the same age he did at United. Rooney looks 50 years old and Waz is younger. That is quite crazy, yeah. So apparently he's a few months older than, than Wayne, isn't he? Uh, that's crazy. Ashley Young looks very good. He does, he does. It's just, it's just like genetics, though. Some people are lucky, some people are not. And... He is a young-looking fellow. Rooney looks like he's ready to go and collect this fucking pension next week, you know? <laughs> he's, he's not far away from it. He's actually only 36, 37. Crazy. David Atkinson, there you go. That's a fantastic example, David Atkinson, of somebody who's got limited talents. But when I say limited talents, you know, I'm not being overly harsh. This is by his, his words himself. I've actually read Kevin Keegan's autobiography, one of the most fucking boring <laughs> boring books I've ever read, to be honest. Oh, shit, Calvin Lewis had a... Oh, no, no, clutches it easy. But in regards to Kevin Keegan, yeah, what, what made him what he was is he tried harder than everybody else. He trained harder than everybody else. He did his own training beyond the training. He, he was that committed to being a professional footballer that it was never going to be anything other than that. You know, he was small physically, so he worked on his physicality, he worked on his fitness, his strength. He, worked, he literally just worked harder than anybody. That's why he got to where he, he was. Not because of talent, but sheer ethic and work rate. Very true. And then when you've got both, like Cristiano Ronaldo say, wow, you really have got something special. Goal deficit of zero. Can we get a hashtag zero in the live chat, guys? Fuck my life. What a shocking stat that is. All season long, we've managed to claw to a goal difference of zero <sighs> yeah defo simon we just just want it to be a sleepy game really you know an everton goal here would be pure filth uh here's anthony dos santos coming on for garnacho garnacho man of the match again on comes gash dos dash dos gash dos whatever his name is anthony gash dos dash can't even say his name but whatever it is mate he's shite he comes on to replace Alejandro. Alejandro's had a good game. Gets my man of the match again. I think he's uh, been the catalyst for the goals that we create. Obviously, winning both the pens and could have had another one that he's won. So, yeah, definitely he's the match winner for us today, isn't he? God, Nacho, GG's. So I get so pissed off with the rash, but he could do so much more piggy. Yeah, oh, definitely, yeah. Mentality is the thing, isn't it? It's, it's the thing, yeah. Imagine if they had actually absorbed like what ronaldo was trying to do when he came here you know he's there eating celery and drinking water all day and uh yeah if they'd have tried to aspire to be like ronaldo we, we would have had like super professional set of players but unfortunately i think there's a mentality problem with some of these melts here oh dodgy pickford just uh clears that one away but it didn't like it was going to just fall to one of our players for a moment there with an open goal, but it's not. Everton look to break. Everton do break. Everton get a ball in. Ashley Young gets the ball in. Johnny Evans, great block, comes out. Really good defended by Johnny Evans. He's He's been one of our best performers today again. Love the communication. Love the organisation. Love the passion. Great signing, Johnny Evans. Still a great player, Johnny Evans. Nothing wrong with Johnny Evans. Still good. Okay, he's not elite. Okay, he's lost a bit of, you know, just, I guess, agility and pace from being 35. 
but he's still a class. Whatever what he's lost, he's sort of made up for in that experience and just that tenacity. Guy's a guy's a beast. He's the real G in the back. Definitely must play. Worst thing about Keegan is he's born in Doncaster. <laughs> <laughs> Rooney was always going to hit the carbonara post career. Fair one, yeah, no, that's fair. He always had that penchant for getting a bit meaty anyway back in the day, you know. I can say that because I'm I've got that penchant too. I'm, I all I have to do is look at a milkshake and a pot on a stone. Same with Rooney, you can just tell, like some people are just lucky like that. Wayne Rooney, he he so just have to have a cheeseburger tomorrow morning, he wakes up six pound heavy. That's just how it is. That's just how it is, you can just tell. Sire Simon Cowie! Dude, get in there, Simon. Come on. Let's get some big love in there for Simon. Thank you for the £20 super chat there, my son. <laughs> Legend, Simon. Thank you very much there. Appreciate you. He says, Pig, the reports in the media are only speculation and not fact because we don't know the full project. Yeah, that's why. No, I was saying that as well earlier. I was saying that obviously there's a task force that's been put in place. We, we, we've seen a lot of reports and stuff. But we don't know the actual extent of what the rebuild or renovation or whatever the case may be is 100% yeah no I did say that earlier but um yes um I we were talking about what we think's best for the stadium whether it's a rebuild or renovation and honestly I, I'm, I'm almost split on it because the history is so brilliant at, at Old Trafford but if you want to fulfill your potential having a state-of-the-art top draw stadium higher capacity facilities everything you, you do need to rebuild a new state you do need to build a new stadium so I'm very much torn. Simon, he says, though, pick the reports in the media are only speculation and not fact because we won't know the full projection until it's made public and the idea is being talked about. Theatre House Legs is two stadiums because Old Trafford is a listed building. So, yeah, I mean, I, I saw some thing from Sir Jim Ratcliffe like a couple of weeks ago as well where he was trying to get, like, taxpayers' money to potentially build, like, a Wembley of the North. Did you, did you see this? Which would be our stadium. Did you see this? I mean, if they could do that, that'd be quite genius, wouldn't it? That would be quite genius. Um interesting simon yeah there's a lot of speculation about it at this moment we'll see what happens but i'm kind of like either or really i'm not that bothered about it i mean you look at some of the teams around the the league i mean you know old trafford's still a good big stadium with great history and everything and the most important thing is how we do on the pitch that's the most important thing rashi's offside here mate thank you for that simon also thank you kieran Hello, Jordan Biggs. Welcome in, mate. Kieran, thank you very much. Says, hey, again, Piggy, missed most of the game. How do you sum the performance up of the team? Right, OK, genuinely, I'll just say it's a bang average display by United today, and we are lucky to be winning the game 2-0, to be brutally honest. We, we've been pretty shite, guys. We have. It's not like we've created a lot. This second half is one of the worst second halves of football I've ever seen in my life, mate, from Manchester United's point of view. Seriously, OK, we're not getting trounced. We're not getting battered. But fuck me, there's no bollocks from us. There's no teeth from us here. It's absolute dross. Like, this is just, we're just petering out from 45 minutes on. I mean, what the fuck's that all about? Where, where's where's the tenacity? Where's that guts to go and get the third goal and give something to fans? We're just, we're just fucking boring, mate. We are literally boring these days. And I sort of say, but it ain't good enough, guys. You know, yes, we've won this game 2-0. Nice. We, we've looked shite doing it, though. You know, we have looked shite doing it. We've got two penalties. They were definitely Stonewall penalties. And yeah, Everton shagged it. But if they didn't give away those pens, it's like I can't see us breaking through Everton and scoring a goal in open play. It's fundamentally a massive problem, isn't it? Tells you everything, really. Uh, I'd say the performance of this team is gashed, to be honest. Yeah, we've done reasonably well, I suppose, in the sense that it's a clean sheet. There's been some good performances there. I'm happy with the back line. I think, you know, you look at you look at um, Lindo and Evans and uh, Varane and these guys, and Dallow, they've had a good game. But where's the creation? Where's the midfield control? Where's the attacking chances? It's shite, man. This is dross. It's absolute dross. Let's just say how it is. This is fucking dross. It is. Okay, on comes Johnny Evans here. On comes, off comes Johnny Evans. He's had a great game, guys. Candidate for man of the match. He's obviously pretty gassed out now. He's had a very, very good game. Johnny Evans doing bits for us there at the back. One of the standout performers. What a player. What a player. Love this guy. Johnny Evans. Love the guy. What a mentality. What a mentality. Gets a big hug by Ten Hag there. Go on, Johnny, lad. Kwambala comes on for him. Yeah, he's been good again. There's been some good individuals out there, I'd say, but as a team, we've not been very good. Yeah, I think you've got to say that, obviously, Dallow and those, and uh, and uh, Evans and Maynus look decent, and Garnacho had a great game, and you know, but yeah, not, not the best. Oh, ball in from the left. Casemiro gets his header on it. Well left of the stick. 
Probably our best chance of the second half, that. Absolute joke. Maria says it's pish again. <sighs> Ten Hag ball is shit. Ooh. Ten Hag's still out. I mean, I think he'll be going in the summer, boss. In terms of what I want, <sighs> probably would make the change in the summer, yeah. I probably would. I probably would. I just don't see us improving under Ten Hag. I think the style is... We've been sold a wolf tickets. In regards to the style as well, we've been told, hey, we're going to have this. And it's not like that at all. It's not no transition you quick in transition pressing you know like attacking style it's it's the opposite i see us playing defensive guff all the time even at home like now we're, sh we're set up to just defend uh, for the whole second half that's why we've not created any chances it's fucking awful so yeah we've been we've been sold wolf tickets mate uh respect for evans yeah definitely had a great season ten arg out and take slabby with him so long as we don't get southgate no true i mean we've got to be careful with who we a point as a replacement i don't want potter either i don't want you know uh, i missed a super chat from sly oh thank you chris dudes sorry i missed that there sly hey you adrian i did it ain't nothing gonna hit as hard as life but it ain't about how hard you can hit it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward that's how winning's done hey you adrian i did it thank you so much there sly um <laughs> thank you sly for your super chat he says is rasmus playing next game we can only hope i was hoping he'd be back for this one but we can only hope sly yeah on the back of a couple of weeks injury we can only hope he's got to be back soon though yeah gutted he's not in there today well i'd love to kieran but i don't think they'll give it to me you watched ix side those years in europe they looked and played fantastic they did sight superstar that's what we thought we were sort of signing up for bringing Ten Hag in. They were very good. Their style was very good. Over exceeding expectations in Europe. Playing attractive football. Yeah, they were brilliant. But this is not that. This is not that. And, and actually, since Ten Hag's been here, yeah, we actually had a good season last season. But since he's been here, it's never resembled that style eh, either. It just hasn't. So I don't really see sort of what is, what is the, I don't understand what the mentality is, what we're actually trying to do. No, and that's true as well, Samoa. I guess it was going to be difficult for Ten Hag to maybe transition that into the Premier League because it is a different footballing culture and it is a different league and, and mentality and style and competition and loads of depth in the league. So, yeah, maybe it just hasn't translated over. But whatever the case may be, it's a failure in terms of how we play. Deserby, it doesn't really do it for me either. We don't want Deserby. I don't want him either. I don't want, um, I don't want Potter. Definitely don't want Potter. You know, like that's, I don't want Pochettino, definitely not. I just, it's not really that many that I want. I, I, I take big Car Carlo Ancelotti in a heartbeat, like tomorrow, but that's not going to happen. We're basically having to choose like some maybes again. They may be all right for us. And I don't think that's good enough. We've we've chopped and changed a lot of times. We have to get the right man in for this job, and this job is a filth job where it's like the pressure's massive, and you've got to get these side performing almost instantly and deal with the egos and the prima donnas and it's a tough job okay here we go we've got a great chance finally a great chance bruno fernandez bruno fernandez cuts in diogo dallo oh, oh bruno oh it just peters out gonna be a corner for united just peters out potter and southgate would be the worst thing ever nah potter or southgate would be awful awful marco silver's a dark horse I mean, I think Unai Emery might be a shout. I could see Unai Emery perhaps being a, a, a candidate. If they'd appointed him at the end of the season, I could see that making some sense because at least he's got a track record of, like, <coughs> Premier League management, winning European trophies, and also, like, changing the fortunes of a really struggling Premier League side and instantly getting playing better because that's what you need. You need somebody who can do that. A point, Cantona. He's too busy doing awful, like, Bjork-inspired songs, mate. You lot don't deserve deserve a yeah, fair enough. Don't want him either. No use getting rid of Ten Hag unless we are going for a big step up. Sideways is useless to us. Well, yeah, exactly. We do need to appoint the right person if you're going to get rid. You've got to get the right person in. Sean Dyche impression. Sean Dyche already done a bunch of Sean Dyche impressions today, mate. Sean Dyche's on the sidelines there with his ginger beard. He's just tucking into his bag of worms there, bro. Never mind the old McCoys or the uh, Walkers, Chris. No, he just eats. He just eats. Worms. Dallo. Gary Neville. Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not. I think Tuchel would be a good fit. Ooh, um, previously, I would have said yes, but he's had a bit of a tough time of it lately. 
Rashford fed in one on one. Rashford! Oh! He appeals for the penalty. Referee's going to give it, is he? Pedal? Penalty? Oh, shit. Offside flags up. Gash. Dude, how many penalties should we have had in this game? Five. That's how many. Look at this. Rashford's offside anyway. Yeah, he is offside. Gashly timed run there by Rashford. And um, it's a definite pen, but he is offside. It's a definite pen. He's completely side down there by uh, Branthwaite. 100%. Definite pen, but he's offside, so it's not a pen. It's not a pen. Rooney for manager. <laughs> no, Susan. I mean, man, no, no, he'd have to go and prove himself first. Imagine appointing Wayne Rooney on the back of that Birmingham job. You'd have to be off your tits, wouldn't you? Nah. LeBron, do you have psychological problems? I mean, probably, mate. It's, pro it's probably probably the case. Get in there, my son. We have won the game. There you go, Everton. Have some of that. The game is finished. 2-0 to Manchester United. Three points in the sack, baby. Sean Dyche has lost the Battle of the Baldies today against uh, Eric Ten Hag. But in all fairness, I have to say Manchester United... Kind of fortunate in this one. I don't think we've played very well at all today at all. And in regards to like the incidents, yes, we should have had five penalties. So we deserve to win the game. But actually, stylistically, and how we've gone about it, and how convincing we've been, we haven't. We haven't been convincing whatsoever. The style was gash. The chance creation was gash. The clinicality was gash. The controlling midfielder was gash. Everton dominated our second half for chances, possession. And they look decent. If it was if it, if if it was just an open play, obviously we would have struggled to have scored a goal. We didn't score any goals from open play. We've got the pens. They were definite pens. Garnacho's one of the pens taken by Bruno and Rashford. And jobs are good. And three points in the bag. Get in there, my son. It will do. But all of the same lingering problems are still there. You can see that we're we're looking like shite. The team stylistically is rough. But even so, it's a clean sheet, and uh, we won the game of football. Get in there, my son. Come on. So, yeah, keep winning these games. Try and get on the right track. Hopefully have a push for top four at the end of the season. But goodness me, what an absolute snooze fest on that one. Crikey. Absolutely gash. Um, in regards to the individuals, Johnny Evans has performed like a beast. Onana's had a great game. Alejandro Garnacho, brilliant. In terms of man of the match, I'm going to give my man of the match to Alejandro Garnacho. Could have had a hat full of penalties won for us today, the lad. Very, very good. Uh, you've got to say, defensively, we've done a great job. Elsewhere in the team, though, I'm struggling to see what we're actually doing. Ten Hag's style is devoid of any sort of quality. We don't control the ball well. We don't keep hold of the ball well. We don't create well. We don't take our chances well. You don't see the likes of Rashford getting in on the ball a lot in the final third. Or, you know, you just don't see that much from us attacking-wise. And when we're the, the home side at Old Trafford, even if get we're tuning up, side. I get it. Play a little bit tighter. You don't want to leave yourself exposed. You don't, you don't want to allow them back into the game. But in doing what we did in that second half, we kind of allowed them back into the game anyway, just by letting them play their football and get at us. And they've dominated chances in the two-thirds. You know, their, their third, we've not had very many options in that second half, whereas it's all been in our third. That just concerns me, man, when we're playing against such a shit team. Everton are 16th in the league here. And they've had a struggling season. And they're just not a great football inside. But we made them look decent today, even though we won the game. And let's not be negative. Let's not be too negative because we've won the game of football. But crikey, man. That's some snooze fest guff stuff right there. Ten Hag, sort your fucking life out, mate. Let's get this team playing with some style and quality, please. At least for the rest of the season. Yeah, the season might already be done and gone from us. There's nothing left for us unless we can beat Liverpool in the FA Cup, I guess, and progress in that. There's nothing really left for us. We're hoping that we can maybe just clutch top four, which is very much in, in the balance at the moment, very much in doubt. But um, in order to do that, we're going to have to play a heck of a lot better than we actually are. It's just a rubbish performance again by us. I know we've won, and I'm very happy to have won the game 2 now and get a clean sheet and all the rest of it, but fucking hell, man. We, we are, we're, we're, we're just a bit of a crap team right now. We are. We're a crap team. We don't play good football. We don't play good football, but a win's a win, guys. A win is a win. Um, you know, there's positives from the game, as I've discussed. Some of the individuals, I think we defended brilliantly the whole back line together was, was faultless, really. Was faultless for much of it. No, Nana's made some good stops. Considering the amount of chances they actually did get, we've defended well in the end because, yeah, we've we've stopped them scoring. And Nana's stopped everything that's been put at him. But fuck me, they could have actually won this game against us today with the chances that they've had. <sighs> get in there, though, my son. We've got the three points, and that takes our goal difference back up to zero, baby. <laughs> that is shocking, isn't it, guys? Zero goal difference at this stage of the season. What is going on at Manchester United, man? Craziness. 
Uh, anyway, I'm going to get into the chat now. See what you legends have said about the game. Thank you so much, everyone who's got in here. Come on, United. Three points in this sack. Have some of that, you absolute toffee melt. We've battered you up uh, with your toffee hammer. and We've left you in pieces. That's how it goes. Couple of well-taken penalties, the difference. Well won by Alejandro Garnacho for both occasions. And he was the man of the match for me. Get in there, Alejandro. But um, yeah, I'm pretty disappointed with the overall display of the team. Just got to be honest, I thought we played like Gash. Pish, but a win. There you go. Well summed up, Maria. Let's get into the chat, see what you guys are saying. Evan's man of the match. That's a great shout. It's a great shout. Uh, Joe, Joe, yeah, it's a good ratio, that. 430 watching, 440 likes. Everyone smash that like button on it. Give us a big thumbs up if you haven't. Well, that's it. Yeah, Tom, in terms of his substitutes, we haven't got the depth. We haven't got the quality. I am Susan Lively Sue over on the gaming channel. Yes, please do uh, follow the gaming channel, Flying Pig Gaming. Fuming with the god-awful team, dead football, nobody had a sense of urgency. The more people realise this is how Tenag wants us to play, the more chance we have of sacking this ball. Oh, crikey, cake it going in there. Raw, lad. <laughs> Bloody hell. Ian says, Man United shit out. Says, yes, people, if you want to meet up and discuss it face-to-face, -face, count me in, you cheating scumbag. Oh, Ian Herbert. I'm so fucking scared that you want to meet up with me, mate. Ian Herbert, no joke, mate. I'd probably absolutely fill you in, you twat. <laughs> Let's be honest. I'm a fucking machine, lad. I'm a 20 stone beast. The fuck, the fuck are you? Tom, <laughs> Tom, stop dreaming. Did you support Ollie like that? <laughs> anyway, a really underwhelming from Manchester United. Uh, Eric Tenon doesn't manage well in game. He has shown that several times. Okay, well, this is the truth. This is the truth. We don't really uh, play well under Ten Hag. Stylistically, we have big problems. <laughs> it's getting spicy, mate. Oh, this guy wants a Glasgow kiss, son. Rashford is stinking awful even after scoring that pen. Yeah, no, I agree, actually. He was pretty gash again today. I mean, that incident in the first half where he's through down the left and he can literally square the ball over to uh, to Garnacho. And there's, there is a chance. Okay, maybe the defender could cut it out, but he's got the option to just square it to Garnacho and try and thread the needle, right? And he should have done that rather than try and take on three defenders and, you know, do it all himself. That sort of sums him up, really. If he had the right decision-making or... Maybe a little bit less selfish in that regard. I think he could be a really good player, but yeah, he doesn't do the right things most of the time in 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 in, in that in that situation. Uh... <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> How many games has Onana cost us? Quite a lot in the early start of the season, definitely. I'd say I don't know five, six, seven, like quite a lot of games. But he hasn't cost us a lot of goals for a long time, to be fair to the lad. He's been consistent. He's been solid. Another one to add to the tally of really good performances by him today. 23 games played, 39 goals scored, 39 goals conceded, and a goal difference of zero. It sums up Eric Ten Hag's poor management. There you go. The big beard. Ian on the sherbets. <laughs> Chris, Chris says, bring on Amrabat, bring on Anthony. Yes, because he bought these players. Well, yeah. That's true, I guess. I mean, we don't have the depth there. There is injury problems, but he did buy those players to bring on. Yeah. That's true. Uh, <laughs> some weird people in the chat today, so negative after a win. I give up. So, yeah. Hey, Tom, thank you for getting in here. I mean, I've got to be honest. Like, I, I know we've won the game, but it's not all positive, Tom, to be honest. Like, the, the display is is a concern. How are, we, how are we making Everton look good? Everton had some really big chances in that game, and if their finishing was on point, they'd have probably won the game. It's not like we could really say we created a lot from that game. Uh, perhaps we were unlucky not to get one or two more pens, and we, we did. That's where the game was won, wasn't it? It was from the penalty spot. So that's their fault for, for defending like shite. But I still don't think we played very well. And I actually think in terms of just like free-flowing open play, in terms of open play, I, I, I personally think Everton looked a bit better than us today, which is really sad, sad, sad thing to say. It's not all positive by any means. Everton aren't that bad of a team. They've been deducted 10. Well, that's true. That's true. That's true. Uh, that's true, but they, you know, yeah, that's true. Goal difference of minus 10 for them, though. We're all fed up with our performances, Tom, even when we're shit. Look, we won. I'm glad we won, but that performance was not good for Man United at Old Trafford. It's not going to... I have to agree with you, Cake. That's how I view it. Yes, job's done. Win's a win and all that. But, yeah, no, I agree. It's not good enough style-wise, performance-wise, even just convincing us that we can go on and beat average teams. It's not very convincing. Everton, Fulham and Palace all out playing United away. Thank you, Kim. Says, catch you later, Piggy, and chat. Enjoy your afternoon. Thank you, Kim. You have a great day. I appreciate you. O'Brien with what players? Bye, hey. Thank you, Seth, for getting in here. I appreciate you as well. Sitting games getting in here raw. What's happening, you legend? How are you doing today? Did you watch that? 
Hopefully not. But, uh, but we won anyway, mate. We won. The negative star is practicing training. Ten Hag football is shit. Why not play Ahmad? Yeah, don't understand that. Definitely we're missing. Oh, definitely we're missing him. He's like a huge presence for us up top. And he's been doing excellent. But yeah, we're definitely missing him. I don't even think he would have changed much today, lad. But it was the midfield where we seemed to lose the battle today. I guess it makes sense when you've got McTominay in there and stuff. The midfield, we just lost the battle today. And that's where the games are controlled or... Or, or lost, really, I personally think, is, is is that midfield area. We just didn't really do well controlling that for the game at all. Thank you, Duke. Oh, you just got up. Nice one, seeing games. Missed that. You lucky, lucky boy. You lucky boy. Haven't seen so much diamonds since Sharon Davies was hitting the pool. Bunch of scum. Uh, you'll leave it here for my fanboys. Just remember how we were playing when we had our f full first team fit. We went on a good run, and as soon as we have to play the guff on the bench, we flop. Okay, Tom. Fairs. Fairs, but... Okay, fairs, but there's also... You know, there is also something called planning. We can plan for injuries. We can plan to have a bit of better squad depth. He doesn't have to play certain players that are out of form either, you know. We also, you know, you look at other teams. Other teams have injuries too. <laughs> you know, other teams have injury problems too. They've got to manage them, just like we've got to manage them. It's about the squad, isn't it? So I agree the squad isn't good enough, and we do have injury problems. But even so, play, play some youngsters then and, and get them to play well. It's a style thing, isn't it? Like, you can play well with, you know, with with non-superstars, mate. It's about the training. It's about the, uh, what's the what's the word? The mentality, the, the, the motivation. All of that adds up to, to the performance on the pitch. There's so many different factors of what makes the team tick out there in terms of football. And I think we're getting a lot of it wrong at the moment. That's all I'm saying. Bruno's too weak to continue. Haven't got good squad depth. That's true. It's true. We haven't. We need midfield playmakers. The best we have is Ericsson. Nah, definitely. And he's past it, mate. He's over the hill now. Your spot on the midfield is gash. Yeah, you think Bruno needs to go? Interesting. Interesting. Thank you, Kenneth Kern. And I appreciate you, my man. Thank you so much for getting in here. Only three points from Spurs. Let's have a little look at the uh, at the Prem table. We've got a goal difference now of zero. <sighs> Back to zero. Uh, in terms of the, the table, we're still obviously sixth. But we are three points off of Spurs. But they've got two games in hand. We're eight points off of Villa, but they've got a game in hand in that top four spot. So there's an eight-point gap, but they've got a game in hand. We're having a shite season, whichever way you look at it. This United side should no way be outside the top four now. So Ten Hag has shat it. PR Penn and Merchant must play. City Ten, how are you doing there, City Ten? I hope you're doing well today. How are you doing, you legend, Des? Uh, we've got the new ownership, so let's just see what happens. Yeah, nah, you know, this season's a write-off for me, Tom, already. I just want the season to finish. Next season, yes, that's what, where the hope will come again. Like, we've got new Ineos regime here running things. Hopefully, they'll invest massively in all areas in the summer. You should see a totally different si side next year. And also, they might even change the manager. It's looking likely, quite likely that they would want to do that at this moment. They might keep him. But it's looking quite likely that with a new emphasis on direction and stuff, they might just sack him off and reinvest hundreds of millions of pounds worth of transfers in somebody else. So, yeah, I can see that happening, but it's true. But this summer needs to be a big rebuild job. State of Rooney. Do you know what? That's harsh fire up, mate. Rooney's a fucking handsome bastard, mate. We're talking about that. Yeah, he's getting on a bit. Yeah, he looks a bit old, mate. You know what? Everybody ages at a different time, man. You know what I mean? You might just be one of those lucky people where you get to 50, you know, you look young, and then overnight you turn into a fucking raisin, bro. People age differently, okay? I've got a feeling Wayne Rooney's going to be a 50-year-old silver good-looking fox, mate. I'm telling you now. He might look like Shrek with a cold at the moment, bro. And he's fucking, you know, he's like the oldest 37-year-old you ever look. Got a feeling he's going to just like, I don't know. I think he'll look good at 50. He looks shy at 36. But I think he'll look good at 50, mate. I'm telling you now. <laughs> People age differently, don't they? Uh, don't get, yeah, that's it. <laughs> that beard suits him. It does, it does, it does. It's just genetic Samoa Joe, mate. Beckham's just a handsome bastard, isn't it? Yeah, he's always been a handsome bastard. He always will be a handsome bastard, mate. He just will be. It's just, yeah. Beckham's just a handsome bastard, mate. It's it's just, you know, you can't, you can't get away from that. Can you imagine how old Luke Lickler is going to look at 50? He'll probably just look exactly the same as he does now. <laughs> he just never ages. It's like me. When I, when I went to um, secondary school, so in year eight, I was six foot two, right, when I was 13. I was six foot two. Do you know how tall I am now? Six foot two. <laughs> no, I'm not even joking. Seriously, I didn't grow. From, I was massive. I was massive as a, like a year eight. Everybody thought I was a year 11. Um, but but, um, but I'd never grew. All my mates grew. They were all tiny and they all grew. And some of them are taller than me now. But 
everybody grows and ages differently, don't they? <laughs> Taz man says, same, bro. Exactly. I thought I was going to be six foot eight when I was six two, when I was 13, but no, just uh, ended up being six two. Strange. Sancho and Greenwood are performing well, but Tenag sent them for loan. Funny. Maynu was a passenger today. Simon says, we are negative because how poor we play and the lack of style and passion and have planned 23 games. We are sick. Tenag, Ajax board is crap and useless. So we are happy we won, but we have no confidence in Tenag. I, I have to agree with that statement, like 100%. I have to agree with what you just said there, Simon, 100%. I agree with every word. That's kind of how it is. Of course we're happy we won. Of course we're happy with a clean sheet. But the style isn't there, and Tenag's very... Uh, very unconvincing with the style and how we're go going about it right now. Oh, God, no, goodness, no, Stuart. My prediction for that game? Pain. No, I reckon we can turn over those Scouse mates, melts, mate. It's the cup. I reckon we can do that. Come on, United. I mean, obviously, they're going to be the favourites, but we could do it. Oh, nice one there, Frankie T. Thank you for joining, though. Appreciate it. Um, Rooney is sexy. to fire up. <laughs> Bloody hell. Uh, six to two, everything to scale. I mean, yeah. Sancho doing well on the bench for Dortmund. You won without style or identity. Well said. Yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, I do too, actually. What a nice guy. And actually, yeah, the passion was there with Oli. I personally think, okay, there were times. Let's not pretend. There were some times when Oli football was pretty fucking bad. It was. But there was also some other times where it was amazing. And we're just cutting teams open. And it's pure passion. We're going there. And we're turning over City. We're turning over PSG. And we're scoring nine against Southampton. You know, there were some great attacking times as well. I do miss I do miss that sort of the feeling of those days. Where we had, like, a club legend in charge. And there was positivity around the place. Unfortunately, the wheels fell off. But, yeah, it would have been great. It would have been great. As a neutral, I have to say, if United were up against a half-decent team with a competent goal scorer, you would have been in trouble. Spot on. I agree with you. People forget why Oli was sacked. Why was he sacked, though, Superstar? So he started that third season after not winning the Europa League final, got us to a major European trophy, and we lost on penalties. We signed Ronaldo, Sancho, and Varane. And then for a couple of months, we struggled. We really did. We had injury problems. Cassie was out injured. Varane, you know. No. Did we sign Cassie that year, actually? No. What the fuck am I talking about? No, not Cassie, sorry. Var Varane. Varane was out injured. That's who I mean. <laughs> Varane was out injured. And uh, then it just seemed to shit the bed and we struggled for a few weeks. And then he got sacked. He got sacked. But actually, if you think about it, he was sacked pretty quickly in the end, I reckon. Now, it, com it comes a point where you've got to say, this just isn't working. So, But if you actually think back, he was sacked off pretty quick, considering that he was doing well the season before. Oli was 13 points off the top and he was sacked. We are now 19 points from the top. Spot, spot, this is worse now. Yeah, well, there you go. That's pretty bad. Oli had issues with players, says MD. We looked awful by the time he got sacked. We also never had any style. Yeah, people moan about the style and we definitely, he's not known as being a tactician, is he? But crikey, T Ten Hag's supposed to be this, this tinker man, this tactician or whatever. There's no, I don't see the style of this side any better at all than the Oli days, mate. I think we should raid Bayern a name for Musiala and Harry Kane. No, that'd be lovely. Tenar can't be sacked because there's just no good options available. Maybe in the summer they, they'll do it and appoint the right person. Things can change in a few months now. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Oli had no CDM. We must have standards on the top club. Glazer's policy is to sack the fall and Champions League is gone. Tenar's such a boring manager pig. Well, yeah. <laughs> Here's a question. Why did you immediately go for Oli man out like he was clueless and out of his depth, but Tenag doesn't get anywhere near the criticism? Yeah, I don't get that either. I know. I know. I still don't get that. You're right. Spurs reject. I think they were right in the decision. He really does have the charisma of a pot and plant. Fair play to you guys. Right, anyway, that's going to that's gonna be it for this stream today, guys. That's the watch along right there. I do want to say thank you all so much for joining in and getting involved. All the legends in the chat. Thanks for interacting with me today. Uh, thank you to all the members in green for being members and supporting the channel. Thank you to all the moderators in blue for moderating the chat. You bunch of legends for giving up your time and moderating the chat. Really do appreciate it. And also, um, everyone else who's got any super chatters. Thank you to all the super chatters. Thanks to all the, the members, gifted members. Gung, she gifted out 10 members earlier. What a legend. Thank you so much for all the support on the channel to everybody. Uh, and you have yourselves a wonderful night, guys. I did see that Samoa Joe. Yeah, sort of right was on the wall for that one, wasn't it? Mm, don't know, Mark Sweetbar. I mean, he's still got a lot of professional players on huge, huge money there. Goodness, I mean, you know, I know. I mean, I don't know, but I basically know that there's some managers out there in the world that could take this set of players right now and get us playing better football and winning more games. I know that. You might say you can't say that, but I just know that. There's some manager out there, some managers, lots of managers probably, 
who could come in and not buy a player, but instantly get us to play better football and win more games. I, 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 I'm 100% confident of that. Yes, we don't have uh, the best squad of players. We've still got a lot of good players. We could promote the youth. We could do whatever. Get your, get your fucking tactics right. Get your motivation right. That's after battle. Get all that right, and the rest will fall into place. But, yeah, no, I, 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 don't, play, I, don't, I don't buy that. Oh, the personnel's not good enough. No, you've got to work with who you've got, and there's other managers that would squeeze more juice out of this orange than what we're seeing right now. That's the reality. So, you know, he's failing. DC Porsche, let's go. Thank you, the mustard. Get in there, Scoo Joe, my son. Thank you, Sing Game. Says, smash that like button, legends. Yes, everyone, hit that thumbs up before you go. Subscribe if you're new and get yourself involved. Matt says, up the woken. Nice one, Matt the Cat. Thank you, Kieran. Thank you, Samoa Joe. Chris Koo, thanks for gifting out a membership, you legend. Cool, cool, cool. Call in the dove from above for Chris. Cool, cool. Mate, thank you, Chris Koo. Thank you so much for the membership at the end there. That's a legend. King Boomy's got it. Nice one, Boomy. Thank you, Chris Koo. You're a Don lad. Very kind of you there. And everyone, yes, please do subscribe to my gaming channel right here. Thank you very much for that there, Mr. Primot lad. Check out the gaming channel. It's called Flying Pig Gaming. If you're not subscribed to Flying Pig Gaming, you're having a mare. I'll pin it to the top of the chat there. There it is. It's called Flying Pig Gaming. It's at the top of the chat. Go and subscribe to Flying Pig Gaming channel. We do gaming over there. We've got FIFA later on. So come and join us for that. Nice one, Fracture. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Must Play MT, Chris, Superstar, and everyone. Bloody hell, guys. We've got eight days to wait now until the next United game, isn't it? Yeah. That is shite. I'm sick of United being gash. <laughs> to be honest with you, for, for many reasons, you know. I, I, I love watching United, and obviously, because we're so unsuccessful right now, we've got a game once every bloody ten days. It's doing my head in, to be honest. MD says, enjoy a late lunch, pig. Thank you, MT. <laughs> Superstar says, thanks, pig, in chat, and good job, mods. Thank you, Samoa Joe, legend bro. Thank you, Kate Cadet, for getting in here raw with all your passionate opinions, as always, Don. Mad Owls, thank you, Chris Koo, absolute hero. Superstar, Jason Jackson. Mate, thank you so much to La Preta Esta Abiata. Gracias, amigo. Mi casa su casa. Thank you so much, La Preta. Appreciate you, bro. Absolutely awesome. La Preta Esta Abiata. Thank you very much indeed there for the super chat, my friend. Gracias, mucho gracias, mi amigo. Si. Awesome legend. Thank you, La Puerta. Go on, my son. Thank you very much. Everybody get some love in there for La Puerta. Estar abierta. And uh, <laughs> what does that even mean? I hope I've not just said something obscene. Puerta is like port, though, right? Port. La Port of Abiata. I think that's what that is. The Port of Abiata, is it? No idea, mate. Can random name, though. <laughs> random name, bro. Okay, thank you. JRA, Simon, much love, everybody. Oh, it means the door is open. La puerta está abierta. <laughs> it means the door is open. Okay, <laughs> that's fucking weird. <laughs> Get in there, though. Thank you very much. What did my nan do to, to insult her in Spanish like that? <laughs> oh, nice one, guys. Nice one, guys. Right, anyway. Cheers, SRM and everybody else. JRA, La Puerta, everybody. Thanks for watching, guys. All the moderators, all the members. It's from a Culture Beat song. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. Got you. <laughs> Legend, thank you for that. Nice one, guys. GG's, everyone. Ah, we got the win. Three points in the bag. Unfortunately, the team is looking pretty sus. We do have injury problems. Tenar probably won't be able to be on the summer. We'll see. We need a mass overhaul in the summer. But it's a win. It's a win and it's a clean sheet. It's a win and it's a clean sheet. Come back afterwards. Get your thoughts and opinions in about how we played. There will be a post-match reaction video posted in about half an hour or something. So come back and check that out. Get your thoughts in on how we've gone about things today and where you think we're at. But until next time, have yourselves a great day. Go and subscribe to that gaming channel at the top of the chat there. It's pinned to the chat. It's called Flying Pig Gaming. And I'll see you tonight on over there. And also, if there is any sort of breaking news or anything United-wise, we'll jump on later and talk about it also. Legends. Right. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. Bloody hell, it's not even 3 p.m. Cr crazy. I'm going back to bed. Guys, have a, have a good day, everyone. And I'll see you on the next one. Stay classy. Piggy loves you. Like, subscribe, comment. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Twitch, and Kick at Flying Pig United. And I'll see you on the next one. Come on, United. Love you guys, and I'll see you soon. <laughs> and remember, when the seagulls follow the trawler, as this is because they think sardines will be thrown into the sea. Thank you very much.